Friends, welcome back to another live stream. Now, we have a very special guest, and I know I always say that, and anybody that actually manages manages to extract themselves from Scientology, and my book is a special person because it's hard to freaking do, especially coming on to speak out. But when I say this is a special guest, I really mean it because you're going to hear some things that you haven't heard before. And if you didn't think Scientology was evil and decrepit enough, wait until you hear what this gentleman has to say. Now, I'm going to give a trigger warning because there's going to be several things that you're going to hear that you probably haven't heard before, and it's not pleasant. So if you have a weak stomach, please tune out now. Um, and if not, be prepared um, to go behind the scenes uh, like never before. So let me bring on Chris Malin, and we'll get started. How you doing, my friend? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Not bad. I'm a little nervous because I know what we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. I think you're an incredibly bold man for what you're about to share. Thanks. So I'm going to relax. You relax too. And sure. if you need any time, my man, you know, to uh, go take a pee or relax or yeah. whatever, um, I'll field questions and I got your back. Sure. I may need to do that. <laughs> sure, man. No problem. So how about we start this way, my man? Sure. Wherever you want to pick it up from, whether it's childhood or your teenage years, can mm -hmm. you lead us into who Chris Malin is, a little bit of your background, lead us up to how you got introduced to Scientology, and then we'll start to get into the staff. But before we get into the whole story and all the tangents that, yeah. that it probably will lead into, can mm -hmm. you give some history real quick about your status in the church, who you were there? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, so I... Um... I was an auditor in the UK, uh, in Birmingham, in England, and um, I was also a case supervisor, and I achieved the state of clear by the time I was 29, I think, maybe 30, and uh, I, by the time I was 34, I went up to 85. Um, by the time I was 27, I was a class five grad auditor. And then by the time I was 33, I think it was, I became a class five grad CS fully interned. So I did around 10 internships in total with RTC classes. Yeah, so that's quite a lot. And in 2003, I won class five international order of the year in which means that I did uh, more hours than uh, anybody in the world in one year. I did over 2,000 hours in a year. I think it was 2,000, 1,900 or something. I can't remember the exact figure. but um, And uh, the next year, I actually come close to that as well. And in total, I've audited 18,500 hours in total. I've produced uh, 22 clears and over 530 great chart completions. That's it, man? <laughs> That's it. I mean, it's like nothing, isn't it? Wow. Chris, we're getting a little bit of a, it sounds okay, but I hear a little bit of clicking in and out. Are the connections close and or are you close enough to the mic that might help? Yeah, do anything. I, I think so. That sounds pretty good. Okay, it sounds better. Do you want to lean forward a bit, a little bit more? Is that okay? Yeah, it's weird. There's just a little popping sound, which would might suggest a loose connection, but it doesn't matter. And perhaps it's it really doesn't matter. I don't want you to have too much attention okay. on that, man. It's you, all right. You sound fine. It's okay, good. that's perfect, man. So there's his yeah, background. So that's my background, and um, but the the entire time as well, I've also been a professional musician, um, which is what I am now. I'm a professional bass guitarist, um, and that's how I make my <clears throat> make my living and keep my roof over my head and pay my bills and whatever. Um, but, you know, there was always this aspect while I was in Scientology of being torn between the two. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to do both and uh, sort of I, I, I failed um, in both to some degree. And I also achieved some some successes in both. So it's uh, it's a difficult one to really judge really bad um but i've been playing bass guitar ever since i was uh 11 years old yeah and i've been in over 35 bands in my entire career and uh i've toured the world and uh played with some of the best musicians around and 
I'm very fortunate to have been able to do that. Um, and right now I'm enjoying a very successful career as a, as a bass guitarist. Yeah. That's good to hear, man. It's bittersweet, right? Do you feel like you kind of lost X amount of years with all the auditing that you did and they perhaps stunted or in any way your dream? Cause I, I certainly freaking did dude. Yeah, that's a good question. And it, that leads me back to a very famous quote by John Lennon. And he said that the time you enjoyed wasting is not wasted. Very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. And, you know, there were times when um, I was auditing some of my pre clears and we were best friends, like, and we'd spend all day, every day together. I mean, I was on a crazy Sea Org schedule. I mean, it wasn't like it is now. It wasn't Day and Foundation. I was doing from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., uh, six days a week and nine till six on a Saturday. And I did that for maybe 13, 14 years. Every yeah. day, six and Every a half day. days a week. Yep. Did you ever get any breaks, my man? Did you ever get a few nope. days off? Because nope. you were the top auditor ever in Birmingham and UK history. Am I am I wrong? Well, I was told Most by uh, I was told by RTC that I've got the highest number of hours outside of St. Helen in the history of the UK. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I hope you guys can appreciate what that means. Like my auditor at the Ventura Mission, his name was Wayne, which we talked about on the channel. He was kind of like the Yoda um mm. of auditing as uh, marcus mm. sawyer says and uh so even he couldn't do the kind of hours that this guy did and he was always winning the birthday game and mm. i guess I, I hope you can appreciate what that means can i ask you real quick before we move on sure. to like what was motivating you to be so hardcore to to have such a schedule you really believe you were helping people what was driving you that's a losing your question. mind yeah. that's a really good question um because uh, I like helping people and I like, um, interacting, uh, uh, communication, you know, I like to talk, I like to play. I like, I love audiences. Um, you know, but we're all sort of on the same level kind of thing, you know, like when you, when you get, like you get musicians and artists and they're on stage and they think that everybody's there to look at them. And they're the act, right? Yep. But then you you take it to another level, whereby actually you are on stage, part of the audience, and the audience are with you on this journey, and you're all together. Like no one's better than anybody else, or no one's no one's greater. And when you have that mindset, and you play and perform with that mindset, you um, you have a better time on stage, and the audience really appreciate it as well. Yeah, because the, the last thing they want to see some kind of arrogant, ooh, 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 you know, look at me, who I am I the greatest, you know, yep. people don't like that. And uh, they want to, they want you to take them on a journey. And when I was auditing a lot, um, which I did for many, <sighs> many years, okay, man. still tired. I tell you, brother. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was taking them on a journey, you know, and uh, they were sort of telling their own story. And it was a pleasure in some ways to be part of hearing that. It's deep, huh? I was going to keep it together to help guide you, but you're just bringing back um, some stuff, man. Right. Um, by the way, I need to let you guys know that, of course, right when I started this live, some tree people showed up and just started Maybe you can hear it in the background. Hopefully not, but it was just. It's okay. It sounds, it sounds okay to me, Doug. It's fine. Okay. And I'm going to try to mute when you're talking so people don't hear that too much. But I just wanted to let you know uh, about that. Yeah, that's some heavy shit, man, because uh, you just brought me back to all the times that I spent with my little Yoda. And we really freaking believe we were helping each other. Exactly. Isn't that what's so weird coming out mm -hmm. of it that it's not anything like you thought it was? And the, the come down is, I'm still coming off of it, man, 15 mm -hmm. years later. Okay, so with that background, how on earth mm. did you, um, well, you got into bass, did you not? And then you explain yeah. that. And then before we get into how that tied into Dianetics, I wish I could say the name of the musician because I, I know you can't say it, but it's just the synchronicity of your life is pretty amazing how mm. the bass tied into Dianetics, which we're going to get into, yet sure. you didn't kind of know how synchronistic that really was. Guys, if you want to see this man's credentials, 
I would say after watching you and getting to know you, Chris, and learning mm -hmm. a little bit about your story, I would say you're a prodigy musician, but those are my words. I know you hate, you oh. probably hate to hear that, but just it's all right. at 15, you kind of got 11, you got into the guitar and or bass. And then by 15, did you have some revelation where you just started obsessing about it and practicing every freaking day? And yeah, because uh, I kind of knew that um, whatever I told my hands to do, they were doing. And I was like, I'm, I think I'm onto something here. So I, I practiced eight hours a day. I'd get home from school at four and I would play till midnight. <laughs> And I had no social life for like two years. And I was, I would, I would literally just sit in the dark practicing scales for like five hours. Just, I mean, I was borderline crazy about it. And I would put it next to my bed. And as I was falling asleep, I would stare at the fretboard and I would imagine possibilities and patterns, even while falling asleep. I mean, it was just, it was insane. Um, so, but it kind of, um, we, we kind of had a, we grew into a relationship with each other. And uh, it's a relationship that um, I will have till the day I die. It's yeah, beautiful. exactly what you mean, man. It yeah. is. It's kind of like your own personal God. I feel like it's the art that both got me into Scientology and kind of got me out. It was the one thing that they couldn't take away from me. And it was literally my mm. real re religion. You know what I mean? Mm. So this ties in then. So I was, practicing away and then i was looking for something uh bigger something greater than mm -hmm. even that and uh one day i was in a local bookshop i was 16 years old and i saw a copy of dianetics in my local bookshop and i don't know why but i picked it up and went straight to the counter and brought it and uh the guy behind the counter when he saw me buying it actually laughed at me yeah, yeah, he did. He actually like he cracked up, and I was like, "What? What's, what's he laughing at? I'm just buying a book, you know." Anyway, so I took the book home. I took the book home, and that afternoon I started reading it, and I remember one aspect of it, and it was in I think it's in chapter one or chapter two. So I'm sitting there on my porch, and and I read this one line, and it says, "Man in affinity." with man survives and that survival is pleasure and i don't know why but i looked up out of the page and the whole world was like completely different i was like wow that is quite a statement so i read the whole book in like two and a half days cover to cover wow you're the only and, one that's ever done that by the way that's yeah the and some, some, some scientologists through. go through their entire life as a scientologist and never read that book cover to cover. i had to read it on solo one and i tried yeah. to read it five times before that it was all i could only because i had to read it and they say this is the introductory book and it's yeah. used and it, i i would suggest it turns more people away because it's impossible but i do know what you're talking about it's, it's when i read it as a teenager I wanted yeah. that state of clear, Chris. I believed in it. And I'm like, why would there be a fraudulent book being sold, you know, at Walden Books and stuff and all over the news? It never occurred to me it's a fraud. He makes bold claims. And I wanted those states that he was talking about, even though I didn't fully understand it when I was reading it as a teenager. Mm. But for me, it was more the auditing thing than the actual being a PC and processing side of it. I was that very... shows how much you actually wanted to help people. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, it, yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, so I read the whole book. And then a week later, I just sort of let it absorb in my head all the data. It's a lot of data. I mean, it's a lot. And then I reread it again. I, so I read it twice in two weeks, all the way through cover to cover. You're definitely the only, the only one that's done that. Ugh. Wow, <laughs> man. What was capturing you about it specifically, did, more than just a desire to help? What about Dianetics really penetrated you? And were you in a vulnerable point where you were you needed help or were you simply a seeker artist type like you said looking for more what was the draw man definitely the latter yes i wasn't really in need of help i was okay so mm -hmm. um i and then what i did is i got my best mate who lives around the corner from me where i grew up and i dragged him in and i made him my pc did you have any objection when you first started bringing in because you did a lot of auditing with a lot of friends and people were there did you get an objection from him and no. or future people? They never said, Chris, I've heard about Dianetics. Are you sure you know what you're involved in? Nobody. No learned. one knew. No one knew anything about it. Wow. 
Can you remind me so, what year we might be talking about here? Yeah, so this would be uh, so 1997. Okay, this is definitely well before Leah's show and all the exposure that's come out. Oh, since. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Not many no people knew about it then. No, no one had even heard of it, really. And mm -hmm. so I made this uh, this guy in my PC, and I started writing engrams on him for months. I didn't lose and, your uh, sound. Oh, sorry. No, you're taking it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, for months. And uh, then I started... Um, then I was in bands with a few people, and then uh, I was I was auditing them as well. Like even in the reception area of uh, of, uh, of of studios uh, where we used to rehearse, I would be sitting at a table auditing engrams on people, anybody who wanted wanted a session. Were they getting any wins? What were they coming away saying? And did they keep coming back? um some of them did some of them didn't some of them didn't really like it some thought it was okay um some felt better some some did not so don't, okay fair yeah, enough I would say. so and anyway so i did that and then after that i did uh um i i reread it again when i was a third time yes i was like 17 18 because I wanted to brush up on my technique, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. You, what? You're young. Why did you take this so seriously? This is a little unusual. It's the because I was very interested. I was, I was very. I've always been very interested in the human mind, how it works. I mean, I, Got I've it. also, I, I did a psychology A level as well for two years, and uh, okay, yeah, at, at the same time, actually. Um, wow. Was psychology. Yeah. So I did that, and uh, so I read it the third time. And then I just happened to, by chance, uh, see the back page of the book, which I'd never seen before, and saw that there was an, um, uh, an office in Birmingham. So I'm like, what? Like, this is like a group or what? Like, this is not just a self-help book or whatever. So, and there was a number. So I, uh, I called the number and uh, I got through to reception. And then I said, I want to speak to someone about being an auditor professionally. And then uh, they put me through to somebody from uh, Division 6. And I said, hi, I'd like to be a professional auditor, please. And they said, well, great. They said, no one has ever called and said this before. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah. You must, you're a dream come true for them. Yeah, absolutely. So I walked in, I did an OCA and blah, blah, blah. And... Um, Within a week, I uh, I joined staff. Yeah, one week. Now, right before we get up to there, remember that I got to show you this guy's virtuoso skills, man, because this he's an amazing uh, musician. And oh, I can't say that bass is his name, but let's just say why I think is a virtuoso. Besides what you're about to see, is that he picked this up and really got into it at 15, and a year later, he had a very recognized um, bass player recognize his talents. So check this out, guys.
need we say more guys holy shit man i feel like that was i can do better i can do one. better any artist will say that and i know you're speaking the truth because I, I say the same thing chris like i never got to lay anything down on film until yeah. like my acting sucked and then i got it it did i haven't been able to show anybody uh what i could really do too because of that last time but that was fucking beautiful man and like somebody said in here i didn't know Baze could do that either i know mm. you can do her harmonics but i've never heard harmonics like that and so you get you guys are getting a, an idea of the level of skill no it wasn't edgar winter and i we can't say the name because uh he has a relationship and we're not gonna mm. throw out any names uh especially when you see just how deep his story goes Again, if you're just joining us, there is a trigger warning for what's going to be coming up as we um, tell a story. And guys, lean in and relax because we might be here for three hours. We're going to um, give this man as much time as he wants, and he has a lot to share. And even then, it's only going to be a fraction. And we're going to take questions at the end. So I'll be starring him as we go. Please ask whatever you like. And he's here to hang out with us and answer questions. And he's, I already told him off air, he's more than welcome to come on as many times as he wants. And whenever he wants because there's just Thank i you. feel i feel lucky to be talking to you and i'm really proud of you dude for sharing your story i, I but wait yeah. until you guys hear what he's been through my friends but it's important to talk about this because as you mm -hmm. see what happened to him i don't want to tell the story it's but just listen and then when he tried to get out by simply finishing the contract and leaving you need to get some insight as to high profile defectees if that's even the right word because he was just trying to he finished his fucking contract but what they did to him afterwards well like i said you did, just when you think scientology couldn't get any more evil what they did to him is just fucking horrible i'm really sorry man because it, it's disturbing right. it is okay so we're at the point where i'm gonna say you were a virtuoso at 15 maybe 16 after you're a year deep you meet this mm -hmm. famous musician and you get his approval yeah. And now you do Dianetics and you audit for two years and yeah. then you join staff a week later. Can I ask yeah. you how that joining staff went about? Did they pressure you? Did you want to? How did that whole thing go down? I I, I wanted to. Yeah, I, I really wanted to be a professional auditor and make money out of doing so. And uh, they they promised me the moon if I did. So I signed up. Yeah. And in fact, actually, I didn't join the technical training course which is known as the ttc being ordered because you have to have a production record first so i was the staff section officer for a few years first built up a production record and then went into full-time order training yeah what age would that be about chris when did you um what age about did you sign the staff contract and then how many months and or years before you had the qualifications to join staff full-time yeah so uh well i well, I was full time as the staff section officer for mm -hmm. um, for oh, three yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So wow. uh, joined those about. I was joined. I was eighteen. I think. Yeah, I was eighteen, and then wow. uh, joined the TTC technical training core for full time auditing when I was twenty one, twenty two, maybe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um... Did they promise you you were going to be an auditor? Is that what you wanted? What did they promise you at the beginning? And then what were you subjected to? Do you remember it, kind of what yeah. they told you? Well, they said that I can make a living and uh, earn money and all the people. Yeah. Well, it's I a see, lie, right? I, I mean, I find, I find that out. Did you ever confront him when you started to find this stuff out? Because they promised you the moon. Um, like he says, I joined staff. And then when I found out it was really about, um, mm -hmm. they everything goes right out the window. So did you ever confront him? Did you ever have any doubts? Did you ever get wishy-washy? Or did you just, because they do it slowly. Um, they don't just rip everything away from you. Did you yeah, suss that's... anything at that point? Or were you just going along with it to see what's going to happen? Uh, the latter, yeah. I was just sort of going along with it to see what would happen, really. And what's interesting, inter Chris, we lost you. I think you can hear me, but check your connections because I think on the on the on the computer, because I think that might be why um, what you're experiencing. And if you can't fix it, so I'm going to take some questions, so don't panic or anything. If you can't fix it, just jump off the stream and come back on. And then, like I said, check the connections. And while while you're doing that, um, I'll let you know if you pop back up. 
and then I'm going to take some uh, questions while we're waiting. He just got a new mic, guys, like right before this. So we were troubleshooting it. And if we have some difficulties, we'll uh, answer some questions and stuff in the meantime. So fire him away, guys. I didn't have too many stars because I'm absolutely riveted and focused on his conversation. Chris, if you can hear me, do you want to jump? There you go. Okay. So what do we got here? You guys are all chatting amongst yourselves and having a good old time. Don't mind us. No, that's good. But I'm just looking for some questions to fill some dead air here. So audio only cut. Let me add Christopher. And uh, okay. Can you sound check, please, my friend. One, two. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. touch the freaking thing. You're fine. Don't touch it. You sound good. If that happens again, we know that this works. So if yeah, it happens, fine. you know what to do. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, and don't worry about it. Like I said, if you need to take a piss, my man, or anything, I got questions covered and line them up, guys. For I'm sure your audience really want to know that. <laughs> well, I mean, I might have to take uh, yeah. a pee too. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we're on um, staff. You have mm -hmm. the privilege, you promised the world, and you have little slow things taken away, which they explain away. Yeah. So where do you want to kind of start this incredible, what, 10 years, right, Chris? 10 years full time in the chair? Uh, no, it was like 14. 14 years? In Maybe the chair? 13, 13 full time in the chair. Yeah. Day in, day oh. out, nine, nine till 10 p.m. Because you want to freaking help people. Yeah, because and I, I, I just wanted, I, I, I firmly believed mm -hmm. in the technology yep. of auditing. And, but I was forever fighting policy. Can you give an yeah. example of that? Sure. So like, okay, I'll give an example. So suddenly the ED calls an all hands where every staff member has to do something, right? Which is not their job or their post at all. And, uh, and that would rip people off their posts and they would have to go do something else where there's a, an exact policy that states, uh, I can't remember the name of the policy at the top of my head, but it talks about how you do your own job. And if someone asks you to do someone else's job, you turn to go to hell, basically. Uh, that was never, ever, ever followed. And except, it never is. And it never except is. Except for one condition, me. I never, ever did anything that anybody ever asked me to do that was not my post. Ever. You must have been a massive pain in the ass to the people. I got that's why so I'm wondering, much, that's I why I'm wondering so Chris, shit. how did you get so high? How did they, you, you got into a position where you were super trusted. I wonder if they secretly, subconsciously didn't admire that about you, that you were trying to actually... Because, you oh, know, there's did. a policy for four and a policy counter. It's kind of written in Hubbard's thing, right? So yeah. we'd have policy wars in our family where, you know, it's like, well, it says here to mortgage your house and your kid's college fund to go OT. And, and, and the yeah. levels are the only thing that matters versus you must lock down in your finances. Here's the conditions and shit. But mm. we don't recognize that until we get out, like the contradictory thing. But we, so you must have been a massive pain in their ass while simultaneously oh. gaining their respect. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the two people who ran the org at the time. And some of your viewers may know them is uh, uh, Hayden James and Lucy James. And they were, uh, when they left, they formed the indie movement with Marty Rathburn and Mike Rinder. Um, so they were uh, ex Seorg and they were, and they ran it like a Seorg, pretty much, I would say. And uh, yeah. <laughs> There was some real tough times. I mean, not all of it was bad in hindsight. Like I got, I'm very well with Hayden. He was, um, he was the senior CS and S. Uh, we lost you, lost you again. So Chris, just pop out and pop back in. It does sound like there's some kind of loose connection somewhere on that computer that's causing it to pop and possibly lose. Okay. Are you guys all just chatting and, and thing? Can we have a question once in a while? <laughs> I never really have questions. Yeah, fair enough. I, I just like to listen. How, how you doing, Jane? Um, what's on your mind while Chris comes back? Let's see. So they were so out ethics and out out tech and out ethics, ignoring that policy. What the fuck? Well, I mean, they ignore all the policies, don't they? I mean, yeah, they do. Policy yeah. for and a policy against. Where were we, sir? Oh, we lost him again. 
there is some kind of loose connection by man um so i guess we'll we'll throw you back out and throw you back in like i said guys like we set this up last minute and he just got a new mic and actually i can tell him to do something that that will fix this when he comes back we'll just have him disconnect his mic and use the uh mic on his computer i think that will work it sounds a little um hollow like that but you'll be able to hear him i think even clearer because we won't have the popping sound with the loose connection so let's see definitely oh here we are definitely hey chow definitely just paying attention even my mom is listening to this chris i have an idea man how about yeah. you just disconnect the mic and let's use the mic on your computer uh it won't yeah we pop. can well let's just keep going until it sure disconnects sure. and then we'll and then if it happens again do you yeah. want to throw it out and i don't know i brought this mic today i know i, I feel so bad man it's it sounds good it's beautiful um i know it's really nice I don't know it sounds good now i think if it happens again you can either pop in and out or you can just remove it and then you can just use your computer mic it's not it'll sound sure. fine either way yeah, yeah. so all right carrying on okay. question for you sir yes how did the how Shoot. did the music how did you how did he balance music? Oh, that's I a like great that question. question. Yeah, yeah. Could take it away, man. Look, let like me read it question. out quick so everybody knows what the hell we're saying. So he, um, witness says, how did he balance music and working with Scientology? Did they restrict access to music? Yeah, they did. Well, they tried. Um, so let's say I had a show on the Friday night and I would say to the DFP, I've got a gig this Friday and she would schedule somebody for that Friday night. Oh, thank you for the congratulations on the new mic. Let's just hope it holds. Um, oh, he once he figures it out, it's gonna sound, but it's gonna <laughs> yeah, sound yeah, badass, yeah. dude. It's gonna be fine. Um, so, um, yeah. So, and the, and they would schedule a PC, and I would literally at six o'clock, I'd be gone. I'd be like, that's it. You didn't do emergencies. You didn't do, um, no. hey, you, this is your, if you leave, you're going to go to ethics positions. You could put your foot down and not wind up in deep shit. Yeah. Well, I would get a bit of shit, but not too much because they need me more than I needed them. That's true. But they try to pretend that the opposite is true. It and if is. you were anything less than you were, they might actually try to get rid of you because it really does depend on the status and how valuable you are, right? They definitely don't want to lose someone like you. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And then, um, so I did a lot of auditing and I trained, I trained up to, then I did CS training and I did, uh, FPRD auditor and senior oh, set wow. checking and I did FPRD and wow. senior set checking case supervising as well. That's amazing. By the way, just to give you guys some context, it's not that he's just doing the class one, class two, class four, class five no. auditor course. That's one thing. And then to do the class four CSing and class five CSing, it's an unbelievable amount of work that I didn't do it. And I can already tell you this, uh, my friend, cause I think I got up to class one and you have to do an internship. You have to do a video pass. I'm telling you, man, guys, the courses that we do in Scientology, I don't think we could be dumb because they're almost impossible to pass. So by the time you actually finish a course, let alone, you know, grad five CS, it's an unbelievable amount of work. Do you want it to is. say anything about what that entails, bro? I mean, if you <laughs> want to, because I mean, where would you start? It's a lot of work. I mean, it's just, it's That's just, an understatement. I mean, wow. I mean, I did my CS training while auditing sort of like super part-time and I did my internships at AOSH in the UK um, and I got RTC passes on my class 4 CS, uh, class 5 and grad 5 and FPRD. Wow. CS, I think. Yes. Is it the grad 5 part of the uh, CS that allows you to, to deliver the special rundowns like the FPRD, false purpose rundown and such? No, that's a completely separate thing. Where do you um, train on that to be able to deliver actions like that? Um, I, I did the course in my local org. Yeah. I mean, you can it's do it. Yeah. A separate it's a course. separate course. Separate course. That's courses. right. But, but the internships are much more difficult to do because not everyone's trained in it to be able to sort of oversee that. So I did that and, um, and most of it I had to get approved from St. Hill. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. Okay. So we might be going into trigger territory just to let you yeah. guys know what specifically would you like to speak on regards to your whole auditing career and take your time and wherever, we'll go wherever the conversation goes sure well um i mean so i trained on golden age of tech one right mm -hmm. um and at the time 
all those people that were previously trained had to do what were called uh, certainty courses, which were like 200 pounds each. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not very expensive and very minimal. Um, so, and at first, this was the one thing that started the slight cognitive dissonance in my head because I thought, so you're telling me that those guys that trained under Aaron Hubbard have no okay to audit. That's what they're saying with that. Yeah. Yeah. And in my head, I was like, I can't quite work that out. So like you have some old lady who's on the Apollo who LRH personally trained to audit and she suddenly could not audit yeah. because she's not done these courses. That's amazing that you say that real quick, real quick, Chris, because I didn't quite catch that, but that's exactly what that's saying. Uh, everybody that didn't get this uh, golden age of tech, they were all basically uh, doing it all wrong. It's almost like everything they did was invalid. That's literally yep. how, what he's saying by Miscavige selling this new thing. So that's when your yep. alarm bells and caught first yeah. questioning, would you say, would you say that's the first time you started to kind of get some doubt? Yes, in it there? was. Yes, it was. And I'm, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm watching videos from Marty Rathburn. That I had to watch every single day. Yes. These videos, I was just like, oh God. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Mm. That's torture. That's even worse than watching the L. Ron Hubbard uh, videos that he created <laughs> on various choruses and DRs and such because they're bad, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm no, sure you no. watch those over and over, right? How many times did you watch the LRH technical training films and the TRs and all that crap? Do you remember those videos, right? That was. Mate, I've probably watched the E meter drills film um you're probably talking in the in the in the big hundreds six seven really? eight hundred yes. no way are you kidding me with that figure no because uh, wow i could see how that's possible because i as a public that didn't do anywhere near the training that you did i've seen mm. that at, le at least 50 times yeah so it's about six to eight hundred and you're still here to live to tell the tale yeah. i mean that oh my god at least i think so yeah. No, you're here, man. I mean, congratulations on getting out because. Well, yeah. Because, okay. So after you start having some of the doubts in golden age of tech and you carry on. Yep. Is there any kind of intel or information you can give dealing so intimately with preclears as to what might come up or what did you ex what stands out in all those years and getting all the secrets i i think scientology kind of seems like an intelligence gathering agency and the way mm -hmm. of auditing can be used to suck out the secrets that you can't get anywhere else and they're experts at doing that so did you hear any kind of information that was shocking or that you had to keep to yourself or that kind of was off-putting to put it lightly well um yeah i did and you, you want me to go there now? Shall I? No, you don't have to. We can lead into it. And you can, it's your story. So um, if you want to build up to that and talk about other things first, okay. or you, if you don't even want to talk about it, you guide the story, my friend. I don't want to um, jump too quickly. So say yeah. whatever you'd like to say uh, before to introduce us to your, uh, what you'd like to say about the auditing when you're an auditor in that chair. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I was hearing a lot of things. Um, things that I was auditing staff members, uh, public, and things that they were keeping secret from each other, especially in their marriages and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I became sort of the person to avoid when not in session. Can I ask why real quick that would be? Sure, because I knew everybody's secrets. I knew everything about everybody. Okay in that building and all the public pretty much. I knew everything. I knew exactly what they used wow. to get up to at home in their private time, yeah. in their sex life, um, all of it. I knew everything about everybody. And some people didn't like that, but hey, that was my job at the time, you know? Um, and looking back on it now, it was, uh, it was, um, it was a little awkward. <laughs> at least, uh, Did at you? Times. Because you were so kind of rebellious, Chris, and you knew everybody's secrets, and you seemed to even be able to keep some kind of, correct me if I'm wrong, but you did seem like you were able to keep some personal integrity or personal ethics of your own, despite yeah. the demands. Did you Were you a threat 
in in addition to knowing people's secrets just because you might flip you might call out the policy you might be the one that asked too many freaking questions i get the feeling that that was the kind of guy that you were is that yeah true? i was a i was a pain in the ass yeah that's the word i was searching for yeah i was yeah to, <laughs> that's, to, that's dangerous to be in scientology it is and uh, uh, you know uh, whenever any I'd, I'd have a new senior they'd, they'd take a big hard fat gulp knowing that they were going to be over me because I just was there to audit. I was not there to get involved in the ideolog. I was not mm -hmm. there to um, get involved in in any fundraising. That was not my bag. It's not policy anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like when the ideolog strategy started and it happened, I literally, I, I was just like, what? I mean, literally everybody was taking off post. No one yeah. was doing their regular jobs. It became the org became a uh, fundraising um, money making thing, and I, I had hardly any PCs because they were spending all their money um, on on ideal org donations. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. which, in fact, even the staff members were. And, and they didn't have at, any money. They didn't even no. have any money. They were beg borrowing well, and stealing from their uncles, or, or yeah, every, no, it, it festers on itself, it's, right, Chris? Some, it, every, some had, yeah, but some had some money. Uh, they okay. would get inheritances, or mm -hmm. you know, uh, they'd they'd work part time elsewhere, and that's right. And I think no I think I was the only staff member that never ever donated to the ideal org. Good for you. Yeah. So it must have been hard not to do. Yeah, it destroyed the, the org. It absolutely destroyed it. It completely <laughs> obliterated it. Did you at that point call that out? And if so, what was the response? And yeah, was anybody else speaking out about the yeah. obvious glaring problem? Oh. No, nobody else, just me. And I was called really? I was called disaffected. I was given ethics interviews. I was, you know, what's your problem with the ideal org strand? Right. What have we missed? Did you get on sec checks? Did you yourself have to get sec checked? How bad did it get in terms of you question daring to question um, that? I don't recall having getting sec checked for that. Um, no, I don't think I did. But you know, like everyone would look at me with a very skeptical sort of eye. Yeah. Because here's the thing, Doug, right? Mm -hmm. Our org at the time had the second highest body traffic passing to it in the world of wow. any org. In the world? Only, in the world. Not only just the UK? To, no, only next to New York. New York had the highest. Birmingham will get the second highest body traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And then management brought a building completely off the grid, five miles away, in the middle of nowhere, with no public transport, and nobody ever walks past it. People have often asked if David Miscavige is purposely or was purposely trying to um, destroy Scientology because that doesn't make any sense. Do you have an explanation or a theory? I have I my do. own. Okay. I do. And I don't think that he was trying to destroy Scientology. I think he was investing and looking at what's going to make him the most profit in real estate. There you go. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. And that's very counter to uh, you why I got into it and many other people, and that's to actually help people. And because, he's running like a scam to make money for himself. Yeah, and he didn't care that there's nobody walking past that org. That's very telling. Well, he didn't. We had the, the stats at Birmingham Org in our old building mm -hmm. were 20 times what they were when I left. 20 times, say that again, please. So the, the, the statistics of Birmingham mm -hmm. Org when we were at the older location were mm -hmm. 20 times higher than when we went to the new building. Yeah, for obvious reasons. So for, is, for, for, for first starts, uh, courses, uh, auditing hours, everything else. Yeah. Wow. Uh, on average, I would say around 20 times higher. Yeah. So it, it just completely for, crashed. Mm -hmm. It crashed the org. Completely. Yeah. And I'm surprised you, I'm not surprised because I know the Orwellian uh, environment and the fear tactics that they use to keep everybody silent. You wouldn't dare question my friends. Um, Anything that's coming up from COB, Chairman of yeah. the Board, David Miscavige. So, you know, you, well, you keep in line. And, yeah, and me questioning David Miscavige was one of the reasons why I got declared. When did you question him, young man? Well, uh, openly, uh, Golden Age of Tech 2, mm -hmm. especially. That's a whole other thing. Before we get that. to that, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, Chris, but just before we get to that, just so the audience, I try to pretend like they don't know any of these words, and you're doing a great job, especially with the trained okay. auditor that you are, of not doing any Scientology words. Of course not. Bring... No. So, it's yeah, yeah. So, Golden uh, GAT2, Golden Age right. of Tech 2. So, it's a complete revamp of all the entire training side of the bridge. And it's 
supposed to iron out all what is not standard and bring it into a line of being standard. But guess what? What? LRH, LRH had already standardized it. But they missed a comma in the books and they didn't have the drills. And David Miscavige has the new way to do what was already there. And um, I, it's also a great uh, money scam to uh, have you redo the entire bridge. So, yeah. So I, here's the thing, right? This is the one reason why I left that. In fact, it's the main reason, right? Um, so Golden Age of Tech 2 came out, right? Mm -hmm. And I was told that I can only continue auditing if I restudy and what's called in Scientology high crime, mm -hmm. which means you get a checkout on the reference that you've just read and you hold cans on an e-meter and you get a word clearing check on it. And when you've done that, you can then audit it, right? And that's called a high crime checkout because wow. it's a high crime in Scientology to audit a procedure if mm -hmm. you've not been high crime on it. So, really? Yeah, because Scientology, they, they, they love their verbs, you know, to high crime. Yep. Like, so um, yes. so I, I personally, at that point, having spent 10 years training in Golden Age of Tech 1, wow, dude. high crimed all the new Golden Age of Tech 2 references, right? Which took me two weeks because there's a lot of new references, right? Only two and, weeks, though. That sounds very fast. Well, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not, I can read quick. Are we, are we talking about the certainty courses, Chris? Is this where they have nope, the... Uh, nope. Okay, we're no, not no, up no, there no. yet. Okay. No, no. These are not certainty courses. In fact, uh, there were no certainty courses for Golden Age of Tech 2. Okay, where in did fact, the certainty courses kick in on? That was Golden Age of Tech 1. Got it. Yeah. And Thank there were no certainty courses for Golden Age of Tech 2. And what happened was, was that Dave Miscavige ordered all orders of certs worldwide cancelled. Say that one more time, please. So David Miscavige ordered all orders to certificates for Golden Age of Tech 1 cancelled worldwide. And everybody had to redo from the bottom up again the entire training. We're not talking certainty course. We're, we're talking none, straight none, all the none, courses none, over again. So I said at the time, I pulled out the LRH policy, mm -hmm. which states that if you want to cancel an order to certificates, you have to give them a committee of evidence. That's right. And I, yeah. So I said, I want a committee of evidence, please. <laughs> you are bold, man. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, I don't take any crap. Like I'm that. getting so, that vibe. Yeah. So I said, I want my committee of evidence. And it says, you're not getting one. And I said, so what? You're canceling my certificates now? They said, oh, man. and the ethics officer who I was talking to at the time said, I'm not canceling your certificates. COB is canceling your certificates. Wow. Wow. wow and I said, man. I spent 10 years studying this stuff. And now I've got no okay to audit. So I, I this was as I was transitioning from leaving staff. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, how much is it going to cost for me to get back to the same level of training that I was if I'm public? And they said 38,000 pounds. An X amount of months and years to, to go redo right. all that. And for what, Chris? Yeah. For, what, for what? Right? Let me tell you, this is the point I'm making, right? Mm -hmm. So after having restudied the Golden Age Tattoo references, and doing the meter drills on the brand new quantum mark six e meter or whatever. It was so beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember that. You must have been <sighs> thrilled. <laughs> so uh, after having done that, I, I saw that there were not enough changes and there was not enough stuff to warrant a complete blanket worldwide cancellation of all orders of certificates across the planet. And I said to myself, this is bullshit. I am getting out of here right yeah so um i i i finished my contract to the day and uh wow. and 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 left yeah and thought fuck this i didn't do anything for ages so you gave up all that investment and everything that you freaking invested in did you you had mm. to have still believed that the tech works at this point you're helping people and it's just freaking cop it's lunatic what he did right what yeah. what kind of what mental state were you in when you decided to leave that must have been some to be honest with you I was, I was i was mentally scarred from having heard several things from several pre-clears 
And I want to get into that now. Okay, go for I it. I want to talk about that. But first, I just need to blow my nose. Is that okay? Absolutely. Perfect. We got, I'm going to take some <laughs> questions. Take, take your time, yeah. Chris. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Okay, perfect. So now we know when the trigger warning's coming. Um, yeah, what he's going to be talking about next, I suspect, is um, it's important. It's not. It's important to hear so you can know. I'm just going to let him explain it. So let's see what we got here, my friends. We'll definitely be joining for this. One. Oh, yeah. No notifications. If you... That I think happens to a lot of YouTube channels. If you keep checking in, make sure you got the little bell icon or whatever the hell uh, pressed, then you should get notifications. But I think it's just a YouTube problem because people say this all the time, not just on my channel. Question. Now, I'll ask them um, when he gets back, but this is a good question, Jane. Did music keep you sane? I don't play an instrument, but music is my sanity. Must be more so for you. Yeah, every music's like the universal language, right? So, you know, I know when I listen to tunes, it's uh it's my sanctuary. But yeah, did you see the bass playing from this guy? I'm sure it was his uh religion. And here he comes. What are the questions? I got a couple some of your questions uh start here, guys, and I'll throw them at him. This is a perfect time to uh Chris, I don't want to break up your flow if you're kind of ready to go, but I do have about five or six questions I could throw go. at you if you want to take a little Yeah, I'd love to answer them. I would Perfect. love to answer them. Okay, so here we go, ma'am. Let me remove this one. I will read them out and yeah. you answer them. Question from Jane. Did music keep you sane? I don't play an instrument, but music is my sanity. Must be more so for you? I would say it's more than sanity. It is me. Beautiful answer, by the way. Yeah, I am music. perfect and says everything. Yeah. Like I said, guys, if you're just joining us and you have any doubts, we played a sample of his music and it's from heaven. Question from Mrs. J. Hey, Mrs. J. What was the financial arrangement you had with Birmingham last? Do you understand that question? Not particularly. Um, is that in terms of pay? Is she talking about? Or? I'm not sure either. Mrs. J, if you can clarify that question, I'll keep yeah, an eye on it and I'll ask it, him yeah. at the end or as we yeah. go. And I'll answer it, yeah. Mark Hall. Hello. Question. Does Chris feel regret as to how much time he spent effectively being brainwashed? How would you respond to that? I would respond to that by saying I was never brainwashed. That's, can you expand on that, please? Yeah, sure. There was always a part of me that was always me. And uh, I was never part of the clan. Like a lot of the time, I wouldn't even go to muster. Wow, dude. You are such ah. an unbelievable case study and just not your standard Scientologist in so many different no. ways. Nope. I could tell that talking to you after five minutes when I first started <laughs> talking to you. Your story is just the fact that you got into Dianetics, man. The fact that you you didn't even know that there was a place to go no, for two no. years, and you just have it was waiting in the back of the book the whole time. You just yeah. you you read that book three times, but mm. you must have never got to that last little thing. And here he is auditing a bunch of people, his friends and stuff, and then he becomes the ideal candidate. And remember, this is all just because he's a seeker. We were talking yeah. about this, Chris. I think there's something to be said about the artist brain. That might be mm. a little bit different that scientology it captures everybody i feel but man it really wants those artists and it's simply for me man i wanted more i i wanted more than Did the you? standard society had to offer mm. and yeah, it almost I, feels I perfectly set up for the dreamers because how much does he push art how much does he i mean he has an art course you know how much does he push mm. like be yourself be this creative being there's more to life it all seems so mind expanding Mm. that's why it's such a mind fuck when you get out and realize um i just cut off my family my friends i dedicated myself to this and then and when you hear some of his stories it's not it's literally like kind of the opposite that's at least what yeah. i experienced chris yeah okay, oh man yeah. so there's a there's the answer that's a great answer by the way thanks man and another thing on that right chris like i was trying to get rid of this for the longest time but i yeah. can't unlive it so it's an experience like anything else and i grew mo more from learning about what happened to me in Scientology and just, I consider it part of my overall journey and it's more mm. of an integration and it can make you something that you wouldn't have been minus experiencing all that. I got a lot out of it, even though it wasn't what it, I thought it was in and then especially mm -hmm. getting out and the two aren't inseparable. I don't even know how to explain it, but I, as horrible as Scientology was, it was part of my journey and I can't take it back and I also wouldn't because of what I subsequently learned. What's up, Lady Veritas? Question. That doesn't make sense, Chris, if you'll excuse me. If it all falls apart, he won't get the real estate. This is in reference to Miss Cabbage. Remember what we were talking yeah. about earlier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think he knows that as well. I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, yeah, I hear what that, you're saying. With that question, yeah. Chris, 
I have you on the meter. Don't lie to me. Did you audit DM? I did not, but I was one of the only very few approved Class 5 Org staff members who audited Sea Org. How are you allowed? Is that off policy? It is off policy, but I had RTC approval. I, 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 audited, I audited maybe three or four uh, Sea Org members at RSH, some very high on the Org board as well. Yeah. Wow, man. Again, yeah. you're such an unusual Scientologist and how you're able to stand up for yourself, challenge things, and get as far as you got and not spend most of your time in ethics, Chris. Jesus. Well, I, uh, yeah, the ethics guys tended to kind of like, like, well, they liked me, but they were also a little bit sort of, oh no, I don't have to deal with him. <laughs> you were, were you, do you feel like perhaps they were intimidated by you? You being an auditor and having that status and then having to deal with your ethics when you're kind of, uh, maybe it should be the other way around. Some of them, not all. Mm. It's quite interesting because uh, when I when I finished my contract, I was summoned to St. Hill. In fact, I was ordered by RTC to go to St. Hill. And I was ordered ordered to go see the RTC rep UK. And I went into his office. And do you know what he said to me? He said, what? Chris, he said, Chris, you're here to audit the planet not entertain it that right there that he just said yeah. tells you everything about let's say you get in can i ask you a personal question chris and i might have hit on it before sorry how do you look at the experience of them well you spent 14 years of your life in that seat and it wasn't what you thought it was and you clearly mm -hmm. had a destiny. Again, don't let me put words in your mouth, but it seemed like you had a destiny, a purpose. You knew what you wanted to do. Clearly, you had a natural talent for the bass. You're, you're the same musician you always were. Like you said, you're, you are who you've always been. That's right. How do you have it framed in your brain? Do you feel like they stole your dreams? They added to it because you have a, you've integrated it in the second half of your life, and you thank God you got out, and you still have your music. How do you square that around in your brain? Hmm. Well. The way I kind of view it is that um, I, I kind of like take responsibility for it because it was me that did all that. And wow, man. I see a lot of uh, people who come out or get declared. I mean, I was declared. I was declared uh, three years ago. I'll get into that as to why. Mm -hmm, sure. But um, I was declared. And um, I see a lot of people saying, oh, I'm such a, you know, I'm a victim of the brainwashing and, uh, you know, and this and that. But you know what? you put yourself through that and yeah. you stuck with it and you did it and you've got to refile it as experience as opposed to, as opposed to receiving an effect the other end and that you were completely sort of, you know, like, you know, all this stuff like, you know, court recovery and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't buying it. Do you feel like you were harmed by Scientology in any way? How do you feel about the part of being lied to? Do you feel like you were manipulated or not given the full yeah. picture? Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's so that weird because nice. because I since cannot, I've mm -hmm. since I've come out, I've read Bareface Messiah. Mm -hmm. Great uh, book, by the way, guys. Oh, For exes, yeah. that's a great book to start with. I could I could hi highly recommend it. Um, it really delves into the, the life of Aaron Hubbard in detail that I never even imagined. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, one, this question here, they don't do the golden rod. They, 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 yes, they do. There's your answer, Goldie. And yeah. would you like to explain what the golden rod is? That's not a, a, a golden, a big penis. It's a, it? Well, golden, golden rod is a color. It's an official name for a color, but in Scientology, it's used as a noun, as a, as a severe sort of ethics action in which you are then subjected to that action. And there's nothing you can do about it. There you go. Thanks for calling for the question. Toss a couple more at you, my friend. Sure. So we covered the brainwashing question. That was a great question. Um, we covered that. Okay. Why is this not pulling up? Okay. Lady, um, another question. How are you doing, my friend? Question. I believe I'm a bigger person now for how tough I had to become to survive. Do you have something like that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. In other words, minus the experience, Chris, it made you something that you into something that you wouldn't have become minus the experience. Yeah, 
Definitely. Um, it, it, it made me realize, you know, that despite what I was subjected to, um, some very horrific things like, um, let's just say the time when I won Class 5 International Order of the Year in 2003, um, I put my stats in and they went up lines and then they went uh, to flag and got verified at flag FSO. And I was locked in a room in HO Birmingham for two days and was told that I can't come out of that room until I admit that my stats were false. <laughs> and I was, I was, I had food brought to me. Are you shitting me, man? No. They were pulling no, a Lisa don't. McPherson introspection rundown type thing on you. Yeah. So they weren't going to let you leave that room until you literally made up bullshit. Yeah. Until I said that my stats were false. Yeah. Which they weren't. No, they were not. It's, uh, this, looking back at it now, I say that, and I think I sit there and I think, "What in the hell? Seriously?" But you didn't know what you were involved in, uh, Chris. Just like I didn't, I didn't have one real moment where I questioned it, mm -hmm. because I but once I was in it for so long, plus my family, and it seems like I'm winning. This is why I still don't totally understand it today. It's like an illusion. It's like a. Mm. Hi hypnosis spell it's like it's so it seems so real that even though i've been out of it for 15 years and i don't want to return yeah it is amazing how because you remember you said you read barefaced messiah <laughs> friends that's a book that tells you the history of harvard and to me that's one of the most important things to learn about when you first get out about this because then you can skip going the methadone indie route you can if you understand harvard and who this man really was to us Scientologists, he's not a god and he doesn't say he is, but it's suggested that he's like the Buddha, the first one to figure out how to actually achieve yeah. these permanent transcendental states. So we freaking believe that. And there's no other reason not to when you're in this mm. bubble. But when you get out and you read that book he's talking about, I jumped on the Internet and read that PDF. That was one of the first things I read to get the right. background of Hubbard. You know, he beat his wife. He was into the occult. He he was yeah. did every drug known to man while we're trying to get yep. clean in the pier up. He's so yep. unbelievable what you read in that book that it splits your mind. I, I yeah, had that revelation in one day, Chris. You know, I was mm -hmm. a believing Scientologist. Steve Hassan's uh, book, Combating Cult Mind Control, was at the top of a stack of books that was dropped off of my doorstep. Mm -hmm. I read that, and because of the thing called the bite model, I could see that he the trick the lies and then i jumped on the internet and that was one of the first things i read getting hubbard's background i couldn't i thought i thought it was true but it was so mind-blowing i'm like what do you mean he's in the occult what do you mean he he hurt his wife like what do you mean he lied what do you it's just you're bringing back the moment when when it's just like it, it if you only you guys yeah, could like the appreciate the illusion what was your yeah. response man like how did you deal with it well i kind of knew really I mean, really? there's a lot. Yeah, there's a there's actually when you audit a lot of people like I did, mm -hmm. the amount of doubts that people actually have underneath the facade that they pretend to be being these experienced and uh, ethical Scientologists, the sheer amount of doubts is shocking. Meaning what the the doubts? Meaning that, that, that yeah, they have, that, yeah, the, all my pieces. Yeah, because you pull all their thoughts, so mm -hmm. you know exactly what they're thinking all the time, right. and. Uh, and uh, the amount of people that had doubts was uh, was pretty phenomenal. Really. No shit. And did they feel like they, I never would share those with my auditor because that's a correction list kind of thing and that's eats up more hours. So wasn't that kind of a no-go area as far as people really actually feeling comfortable to share that with you? Um, not really. You must have been a, had high ARC uh, with your oh, yeah, PCs. Yeah, you must yeah. have been, I, mean, I could see that you were really, I bet you even, were even really Even today, auditor. even today, anybody can tell me anything. Like I just, it's whatever. Like, do you think you were like that before Scientology, or that it enhanced it from listening to so many people's uh, whole stories just with your yeah, TRs? Yeah, maybe, in? maybe. But there is one story of uh, a couple of PCs that I did hear that um, I think really your your listeners really probably need to know. Do you want to? Um, I see we have the interference by the amazing Alonzo. Did you, he's anxious to hear uh, what they did to this guy? I don't know. Which, sure. which guys are you talking about? I don't know, but um, I was my bad, Alonzo and uh, Chris. I thought that would be a segue into um, what are some of the things that you heard? Okay, so one guy, 
one guy, I won't name him, but I was auditing him and I was pulling withholds on him and it, it turns out that he was... <sighs> Trigger warning, by the way, guys. Yeah, Turn out he, now. This is very difficult for me to talk about. Because I understand, man. Take your time. It was, it was harrowing to listen to because when you're pulling withholds on someone, you have to get all the details of literally everything they've done in the withhold. To, yeah. to to the point of hand position, sequence of action, uh, you have to get the whole everything, right? And this mm -hmm. guy, it turns out that he's a pedophile. And I'm not just talking about any pedophile. I'm talking about he was one of the big top guys of a network of pedophiles. Wait, would what? Share, yeah, he was like... So you have like pedophile networks, right? And they... Mm -hmm. Um, th they all know each other and they all correspond. And he was one of the head honchos. Mm -hmm. So any any decent, what they would call decent, um, uh, uh, child imagery or video, he would further it on to everybody else. And not only that, Doug, he was making the fucking shit. So when I say making the shit, this guy, honestly. I'm sorry, man. Take your time. Like I said, if you need to take a break, bro, I, so, I can cover. I can yeah, cover the chat, man. It's fine. This guy, he was he was raping children, and I had to pull it. I had to say, "What did you do with this twelve-year-old boy?" Exactly. Fuck me, man. I, I want to hear. I want to know all the details. Anyway, no. this was the first day. I swear to God, I got home and I was like, "I need a fucking drink." Like, Wait, this was day one of your. This actual, was day one of him. What of him? No. Not your auditing. No, this was just him. Yeah, it's not my the audience. first session with this PC. That's the first thing. It wasn't the first session. It. it wasn't the first session. It was uh, further down the line. And okay. Yeah. So I was, I was, uh, as someone who's got children themselves, and mm -hmm. I had young children at the time, I was. Um, <sighs> I mean, I was just, I was mortified from having heard what I heard. So anyway. The next day, I take him back in session, right? Now, here's the thing on this, right? So I started pulling withholds and overts on him again of being involved in making and distributing child pornography, right? This guy was not sitting across from me in such a way as to be sorrowful for his actions, mm -hmm. upset, you know, like, yeah, like, it, can you imagine if he was like, Oh, and uh, I did this, this and I, I sent this video of this 10 year old girl being, and I just can't believe I did that. And blah. to some degree, he was I'm proud. not okay with that. I'm not okay with that. But this guy was bragging I know. to me. Yeah. He was like, I found this great video. Oh, my, oh God, my God. dude. Because you want to hear about this video. I'm going to tell oh you more about it. God, dude. And he goes, and, and he's sitting there bragging. And. I don't know if people know this or not, but it's actually illegal for an auditor to just end session mid session. Right. I ended that session without Good ending. Good for you. Good for I, you. I, I just put my pen and paper down. Right. I went, I said to him, Can you go away in the PC lounge? So he looked confused. He yeah. got up. He sat down in the PC lounge. I went into the CS office. My heart was pumping. I wanted to kick the fucking living shit out of me. As you fucking should have, man. And it would well, have been just I'll get to that because so anyway, I want to kick the living shit out of him. And the ED and the senior case supervisor came in the office and says, Chris, what's going on? Why have you ended the session? <laughs> and I said, This guy who's sitting in there is raping and sending images of children being fucked by adults and he's a, a head honcho and I'm not going to listen to it anymore. I said, in fact, I'm going to go in there now. I'm going to kick the fuck out of him. Yeah. And I had to be physically restrained. They, they pulled me back. So I then said, okay, fine. I'm not going to kick the fuck out of him, but here's what I'm going to do. I am going to the police right now. Good for because, you. Yeah. And they said to me, you know, the response was, if you do that, Chris, you'll become it and declared. 
Guys, I know that sounds impossible, but this is the it's real actual policy. shit. It's real. Yep, this is that's real. right. And this, this is why you might understand more of the Danny Masterson case and the rapes and covers up. And Chris, can I ask you a real quick question? I hope I don't sidetrack you, but I'm really, I've been really curious about this because I've always had my suspicions because of how damaged they, the family relationships and fucked up people can become in that environment. How rampant would you say just based on your own knowledge is pedophilia? Is that something that has yet to come out about Scientology on any scale or is it, is it a minor issue? If you had to speculate. It's a minor issue. I only okay. ever encountered it twice and I'm going to go into both cats, right? Okay, man. So, so this guy, so I, I said to the senior CS, he, if I remember correctly, I think he had to go back in and finish the session on him because I refused. Um, I got in a lot of trouble for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I was into ethics, wow. um, cramming. Uh, I mean, um, and what what boils my fucking piss even more is that this guy was a huge donator to the Idea Law Project. The very next morning, I walk in the corridor, and guess who's sitting in the ED's office, having coffee, laughing and joking? It's so this fucking, fucking child rapist. This child rapist was sitting there in the ED's office laughing and joking, and he just donated another 200 pounds. And guess what? The ED knew. She knew what he was doing. I don't even know what the fuck to say. I mean, I, I do. I know what the fuck to say. Please. Fucking wow. <laughs> that doesn't cover it. Did you go in and see that happening? And then did you have a response? What the fuck is going through your mind? When My you response was, happen? well, they, they tried to put him back with me. <laughs> no as a, as a way. PC. And oh I said, my. I am not touching this guy with a barge pole. You can absolutely fucking be. And they're like, you can't refuse to actually, per policy, refuse to audit a PC. I said, guess what? A child rapist? Yes, I can. I don't want to hear that shit. Thank you. And, uh, so, and he was around on lines for um, quite some time after. But now here's the thing. After I left, right? After I left, it took me several years to Google his name to find out if he'd been caught. Because if he had not been caught, that was on me, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was my, I should have done something at the time. It's because okay, all man. those, all those, yeah, but it's not, it's not okay. I understand, but you were, let's just say. It's not okay. It's not okay at all. And I Googled him six months ago and guess what? He was arrested and charged. He got caught uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, police raided his home, took his hard drive, his servers, and he got charged with one count of making indecent images of children. Wow. Several counts of having animal pornography uh, with women and children and boys on his computer. And he didn't even get sent to jail. Are you but shitting me? I'm not, I'm not shitting you. He got a 12 month uh, community order and a fine. And he also, um, Fuck. yeah, but what the police don't know is that this guy was actually a ringleader of an entire porn network. Are you the sure police, the police don't know? The police do not know. They're not involved but in covering guess up. Guess what? In Birmingham, Morgue, eight miles away from my house, there is a file. And that file tells exactly what he was up to. Are you saying that you specifically have the file or you know what's going on? I mean, I don't I'm have the file. It, it will, uh, Scientology keep files and everything, mm -hmm. they never throw anything away. So mm -hmm. those files there are sitting there in the org. All of his session notes, my session notes, uh, are, are all sitting there, and they co they knew and they covered up for him because he was yeah. flashing the cash. Do you think that cash helped him to get out of having uh, any kind of a uh, actual? Yeah, sentence? and he was it was all part of his plan actually. Really? He was flashing, yeah, he was flashing the cash because he he knew that he would be protected. That's fucking so disturbing on so many levels. I I can't believe that man yeah, Doug, try listening to it that's what i'm saying brother i mean that must have taken every ounce of tr training 
to not flip over the desk and lun lunge at him and literally kill him. That's the well, reaction. I, I tried I to, and I, I tried to, and I was stopped. Yeah. And not only that, Chris, they covered it up, and yeah. they made you. You were the one that did something wrong in Scientology, so you can see the That's extreme right. I was the, I was reverse the one that, of the ethics. I was the one that, yeah, I was the one at fault. Yeah. How fucking ridiculous is that? And guess what? He's not even declared. Are you? And guess who? Guess who is? Me. That says everything, my friends. That says everything. I don't even know what to make of that. You didn't tell. I didn't hear that detail well, before. I didn't know what I have, the outcome was. I have That's another absolutely one. Absolutely fucking disgusting. And, and Chris, disgusting. that doesn't only say something about Scientology's ability to cover up. Yeah. What about the police, man? What about that? Well, they what, they can I only. Mean, but the police can only charge on the evidence they have, and that's all the evidence they had. Because don't forget, mm -hmm. he was arrested and charged approximately 10 years after this. Incident. I understand. Would the yeah. evidence that they had in the pre-clear folders at Scientology, let's say that was freely available, would that incriminate him yes. uh, more? And See, that's what I'm saying. Scientology covers that pedophiles. Yeah. Okay, and man. There was, so there was another guy mm -hmm. who I was auditing as well, and... I was auditing him and I pulled a withhold on him of him sexually abusing his nine-year-old son. So I'm like, okay, he's abusing his son. All right. So I called for a change of CS. Uh, I was uh, like, okay, so this guy, um, he's doing this and, you know, what do we do? We need to do this and that. Next day. I take him in session and that night he got home and he sexually abused his boy again. And I then discovered that this was a recurring pattern of conduct almost nightly. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Now I, at this point I said to my CS, I'm not auditing this guy anymore. You can forget it. Like, I'm not doing this. And the CS's response was, well, it's confidential. It's protected under priest penitent privilege file. And you need Sorry. to do your job as an auditor. And he's confessing. And you need to, you know, help him get over his transgressions. I'm thinking, help him get over his transgressions. He's just fucking fucked his nine-year-old son after a session. Like, dude, where's the, where's the morals? So... The next day, so I said, look, I'm not auditing him, right? So the next day, his wife uh, was the receptionist. And this was completely off policy, by the way, what I did. And nobody actually knows this, but I walked up to her and I said, you need to get you and your son out the house tonight and leave and do it now. And she looked at me and she went, what? I said, I'm not going to say anymore. That's it. You need to, you need to go. And she was very confused. So anyway, the next day he got assigned to another auditor. I think it was the next day. Or was it a week later? I can't remember. It's a bit hazy slightly because it was a long time ago and I audited a lot of pieces, but mm -hmm. he was doing objective processing. So I'm like, what the fuck? So the CS determines that he is abusing his son, his nine-year-old poor, innocent fucking boy, who's not strong enough, not big enough to fight back to the sexual advances of his own father. And the CS has decided that this guy is out of present time. Oh, my God. Yeah. And guess what? This guy was also a big donator. That's why he nothing happens to him. It's all about money. And, Money can, wow, but, dude, wow. but so anyway, a little while later, I can't remember actually exactly how much long later he was sexually abusing him. I heard this because I saw the press report on it and he, I think he was, he might've just turned 10 by this point. So he tried to sexually abuse him again and his son beat the crap out of him. Fuck. Yeah. Beat the fucking shit. 10 years shit old. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And call wow. the police. Fuck. And he got arrested and he was charged. And I think he's still in jail. 
Good. I'm often those people yeah. can get light sentences somehow, especially when you have money. So that's good to hear. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. And this is why I wanted to come on this channel today, because mm -hmm. I need to apologize to that kid's boy. And I need to apologize to any child that was subjected to the abuses at the hands of that monster pedophile. And guys, if you've ever watched this when you're older or ever see this and I knew about it and I didn't act on it, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry because I could have stopped it earlier. I don't feel it's your fault though, man. I mean, yeah, but it kind of is though because I, I knew about it and the policy stated that I couldn't do anything about it, but fuck the policies. They're not above the law. Hey, you so, did a lot, Chris, too, by the way, to, to say fuck the policies. The fact that you even stopped in the middle of the session, I don't think you guys appreciate, or maybe you, you ex-Scientologists do, for him to stop in the middle of the session and not get time, place, form, and vent, where in the hands, I mean, you have to get every vivid detail. He's taking a huge chance by everything he did. Chris, I, I, I'm sure, thank you for saying that, and your apology, I'm sure, has been heard and accepted. Well, I mean, I, that, I just, yeah. But I just understand they, the predicament you were in, my man. Yeah, I, it was. Yeah, I, I'm glad you understand the predicament, but it's no excuse. And I, I would like to wholeheartedly, if they ever see this, kids and the, that that kid at the hands of his dad, who he trusted, and I knew about it. And yeah, you should have. He should have been. I mean, he. Yeah, I don't know. Man. It's tough. Do you know what? I, I lie awake at night sometimes thinking about that. And all those the, the, those innocent children that could have been um, helped and, and didn't have to be subjected to these monsters um, because of what was in place at the time. Yeah. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sure you'd be forgiven, man. Thanks for saying that out loud, bro. Mm. I don't even know what to say. I understand the pressure. I think you took amazing action anyways. And thanks for saying sorry to them. I'm sure they appreciate that, man. What else can you say? Is, but you know why? You know why, my friends, why um, I'm really happy that he's speaking so openly, even though it's hard. Because I think yeah. as brutal as this thing is, this is why I kind of try to speak from the heart to give no sugar coating so people can hear how bad Scientology is, what they cover up maybe even perhaps get them criminally prosecuted, which they should have been in a long time ago. So the more people that have the courage to come forward and admit that they were wrong and that have that say, give testimony. Um, and this has been a long time in coming for Chris because he got out a while ago and what they put him through, they get to this point where he can come on and actually have the courage to say that today. I feel, and I think Chris would feel the same that people, the more they know what really goes on in there, what you just heard, that's valuable information for the faster that something will be done about it because I don't get it unless they are, I don't get why they weren't shut down uh, a long, long time ago. So hopefully Chris's testimony will. The problem is, is that they think that they are above the law. They and are in many ways, don't you think? Though it's a world within a world, and the law, well, the law. They know, covered up the pedophile, Chris. I mean, that this, was not. That's not on you. That's on the. I understand what you're saying. I don't want to take away from yeah. that. But the policies themselves, my friend, make you cover that up. Yeah. They say that you, you know, you broke the rules. You, 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 you put your ass on the line just by doing what to outsiders might seem like minor things. Oh, he stopped the session. Oh, he wanted to beat the guy's ass. Guys, you keep your TRs in no matter what. You're specifically trained within an inch of your life in the auditor training. That yep. This is why we do the TRs, my friends. This is why we've broken all this down. You are trained to be able to hear anything that someone wants to say. And he's a highly classed auditor, and he absolutely should have kept his TRs in. Any, a lot lesser person would do that. They would keep their TRs in, and they wouldn't have that reaction. I just wanted to get across that, yeah, Chris, I understand, man. I mean, I, I don't because that's beyond that blows my mind. But don't be too hard on yourself because I and others understand the pressure that you are reprogrammed to be under and you rebel against that, which is a good thing, man. Mm. I don't have to say, brother, that's some heavy shit. Um, thank you for just sharing, dude. It's okay. It's hard. 
I'm going to throw a couple of questions at you, Chris, to kind of um, segue, you know, off of that. But you said it. There it is. You got it out, ma'am. I mean, yeah, there's other other things as well, but we'll get there. Okay. We just take our time, ma'am. Let's see. Okay. I don't, I haven't been starring questions because I got completely caught up in that. So just take your time, ma'am. Where do you want to go next? Um, We can go into my, uh, my declare if you want to. Sure. Well, we can answer this question if you want to. Sure, I'll read it out for you, man. Okay. It takes intestinal. Is that? Do you want to 40, read it? 40, 40. It takes intestinal fortitude to speak out on what you know, and did not do that. You should have, but you were far from in agreement with how things were being "quote unquote" handled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? Scientology. If they come back to me. And they want to fucking argue about this. It's not. It's not arguable. They can go fuck themselves. You don't even have to have that on your mind, man. They can go. This fuck This question themselves. here, Chris, have you got mm-hmm. a therapy for this? Yes, I have. Do you want to say something about that? Yeah, I've just done. Um, so I've been. I was declared uh, twenty twenty one. So, um, yeah, it was twenty twenty one. Yeah, um, I've just finished actually uh, twelve hours of uh, psychotherapy. Yeah. And it one was hour fucking, a week. One hour a week. Yeah. And it was fucking awesome. Fucking A. There you go, guys. It, it, for those that ex Scientologists that are at that stage where they have the phobias implanted in them, where psychs and psychiatrists are evil. I want to ask you about how you got over that, Chris. But to the audience, that takes us a long time. That took me a long time to finally go see a psychologist because they give what's called an, uh, you don't like the word brainwashing, maybe mind hmm. control parlance, or let's call it manipulation, but they install phobias of the outside world. And especially it's like everything becomes terrifying after a while. So to yeah. actually go to therapy, um, can you talk a little bit about Chris, about how you slid into that and how did that feel? And cause that's a huge area to open up. Yeah. To um, actually go. Well, it wasn't too bad for me because I, yeah. I've, I've studied, I studied psychology that's right. While I was studying Dianetics as well. So, That's right. um, yeah, but, um, uh, my therapist was, uh, uh, beyond exceptional. I mean, they don't, they don't make you look at things that you don't want to look at. Whereas Scientology is the opposite. Yeah. You're there to confront stuff that you don't want to look at. And that's what's trauma inducing or can be about it. So, um, you, you know, it's like peeling an onion com- coming in layers, you know, you get more confident and more able to, um, talk about those things that are bothering you. Whereas in Scientology, it's literally like, what was that? On the mm-hmm. What was that? No, 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 no. You tell me, no, right. I, I don't want to talk about that. Dude, I don't care if you want to, I want to talk about it. What was that? That there, that. And you better give up. And if you don't tell me exactly what you were just thinking, you'll be going to ethics, dude. And it'll be on you, and you might have to get correction sessions. You just re- you just pointed out to me how slanted the game is. In a therapy session, it's not yeah. like that. But you're, you're, you're describing awesome. brutality. You will answer the question. We oh, have yeah. every technique, including blocking you from getting out to make sure yeah. that you do. That's right. And I was trained. Oh, Chris, I wanted to leave uh, so many times. I was trained to threaten people in yeah. session with a committee of evidence if they don't cough up what I've just found. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. Man, Chris, I had to fucking get on that meter starting around nine years old. Yeah. And it was absolutely terrifying because I, well, I, we have boundaries that we have to keep. Every person has, you don't have to tell all, but I squirmed around so many times when the auditor would go there, that, that, because it's all based on the needle, like you said. Yeah. So I would bullshit around, try to find up some memory that I make up or a real thing that happened to give to the yeah. auditor. Cause I was trained as a kid, you will tell all and we will find it. Yeah. And after a while of this going on, my boundaries were sufficiently knocked down. I felt like I overcame something. Cause I'm like, I got to be an expert when the auditor says there, that I would just cough up mm. anything. Oh, yeah. I jacked off. I didn't up. even do much, but I'd either make it up or I would, one of the things that would come up as a kid 
uh, or maybe teenage years is jacking off. I mean, I've said 50% of my auditing was spent covering <laughs> how many times I jacked off. Man, uh, talk do, about you know, do you know how many thousands of hours I've heard of masturbation? Oh my God. I can't imagine, bro. I heard was it every day for like 13 yeah. years. Yes, you did. Did you ever reach a breaking point where you just got fucking sick of hearing the same damn thing over again? Not if she was hot, no. Not if what? Not if she was hot. Not really. Stop. <laughs> that's the thing, man. You cannot. Wh oh, what about God. what about if you? That's a that's a great point you just brought up. Yeah. You have to suppress your normal human emotion reaction. Oh, yeah, so let's yeah, say yeah, you yeah. had an attractive gal that you actually wanted to date. You get to know her case. She's opening up yeah, to you. It gives yeah, you a weird yeah, advantage yeah. over people, anyways. Yeah. It does. Um. What? How did you keep? How did you kind of hand? You have to. Well, to be honest, know? I had many occasions where many really good-looking girls would confess their undying love for me. I bet. I bet. How did yeah, you? Yeah, how did you handle that? It was cool. What would you say, dude? Um, I'd you... say, thank you. <laughs> No, where you said I got that. Yeah. Did you well, ever I'm... blush? Did your were your TRs? How good were you no, with the TRs? No. Oh, my my TRs were, were really, really shit, good. right? Yeah. Oh, In fact, God. one one RTC rep told me that I have got some of the best TRs he's ever heard. You'd have to in order to have gals hitting on you the whole time. And oh yeah, it happens all, all the time. I could, I could see that's so. I'd, I'd funny, get I get I get women obsessed with me. <laughs> And I'd be like to the CS, look, I can't order this chicken anymore. She's like, she's coming in, she's masturbating over me. She's like, she's she wants to leave her husband for me. I, I, oh. I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. And they, uh, half the session will be all about that. And then we get Holy on with it. Holy shit. Oh, it happened man. all the time. All the time. <sighs> I've, I've never heard that before from an auditor, but yes. Yeah, I, can I got used to it after a while. I was like, Here's your new PC, Chris. And then she walks in and she's really hot. And I think, oh, right. <laughs> so when's the first session? Here we session go again. Went? Yeah, here we go. All right. Thanks for this. Yeah. Cheers. And Chris, you, I mean, I know the answer to this question, but to the audience, you can't do anything with this gal. What if you were attracted to her? How would you go about forming a 2D if you wanted to with, with somebody? Well, I mean, did, did you ever feel a spark with it? Oh, you were married the whole time, right? I was married. Holy shit. That makes it a thousand times harder. So how would you take these thoughts home? Did you feel guilty even having them say this shit to you? Right. What are you supposed uh, to do with that? No, I kind of, well, because I was married and I had young children and uh, I loved my, I loved my wife very much. And um, I love my children very much. And I, I'd just sort of leave it at the door really. You know, it never really I mean, affected you too much. It didn't cause any strife at this point with your marriage. Not really. <sighs> There was a few incidents where maybe it did a little bit, but not to the point of me wanting to, you know, end my marriage. No, no. Does this bring us anywhere near and please take your time and back up if you want to, does this bring us anywhere near to what happened with the family and the wife and everything when you start to, uh, when you finish your staff contract or am I jumping ahead? No, oh, uh, you're not jumping ahead. It's fine. Um, so, Okay, you can so, take some um, questions too if you want. If you need a little few moments before you, jump yeah, let's in, take a couple of questions and we'll get to that. Yeah, okay, or some comments and stuff. So Jane says, "Chris, you're a redhead. You must blush. Laugh out loud." Uh, I didn't even notice you're you, a redhead. You, I am a redhead. Yeah, you are a ginger, but not a bright red ginger. One of my I best used friends to be. I used really? To be. Do you die darker? It's getting darker and darker as the years go. Yeah. Oh, looks cool, man. Yeah. Ciao. How are you? Um, late lancing the this wound. And letting out the infection has got to feel so freeing. How have you felt and do you feel about this? I don't feel it as freeing, actually. Um, I I feel it as um, more of a necessity. Mm -hmm. Well said. Um, yeah, because it's not like, oh, I'm out now, I'm free, yay. I was never, even in my head, fully in. That's so interesting. Ever really like, why yeah. do you say that it, even in your deepest belief you know you're because I, I would never behave like you know when it came to events like is events and things like that i would never go really you weren't that wasn't a requirement especially being the yeah it was a requirement of course it was a requirement. how did you get oh, out of those things all staff have to go to the event yeah and exactly. I'd go, i i'd go shopping or something yeah. did you know you kind of had a certain power over them where they they couldn't lay the hammer on you too hard because of your status 
because that's very bold yeah. what you're talking and about. I, I, yeah, and I made sure that my status was, my production was high enough that nobody could touch me. I and see. It, and, it, and it was. That makes freaking sense. JM, how you doing? Did Chris believe he was saving the world? Great question. No, I believed I was saving the person in front of me. You have some fucking awesome answers, dude. Not the world. There's too much to bear emotionally. I feel you, ma'am. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. Lady, hey, Chris, as an ex-auditor, I find myself looking at your indicators. Lady, what would his indicators be? Please let yeah. us know. Yeah. Well, yeah. Goldie's the mod extraordinaire. Um, oh, my. I hope I'm not reading something that just to other people, Goldie. Pardon me if I pulled this up on accident. Oh, my dog, that reminds me. I went looking for something in my spam box where I rarely go. It was full of Ed and penile elongation ads. I missed the... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that comic relief, Goldie, but obviously that's a conversation you guys are having in yeah. the chat sorry i laughed but, oh yeah the erectile dysfunction clinics yeah, yeah yeah i think we we stuck them on the golden rod okay my man i'll keep some eye on the uh and tab some well let me see how, okay how yeah go for it yeah so let's get to my so uh leaving staff so i left staff and then i decided at that point i need a break from scientology really i've been in it working 9 till 10 p.m seven days a week practically and uh i need some time for myself really can i can i just ask one quick question yeah, what was sure. the trigger point for you needing this time uh golden age of tech 2 and all my certs being cancelled that was all i mean come on what was the real problem chris that's no big deal it's just what was the big deal to me because i'm joking because, that that's ridiculous i mean you get, I everybody's 10, basically yes yeah it's like it's ridiculous what, what I'm like, well, whole, fuck you then. Fuck off. How many people left because of that? Because you know, loads. Had to, oh my had god. Lot. That's a, when the indie Scientology shit form and they say it's Miscavige that's fucking it all up, right? Yeah. And they and kind of like mass, well, they, there was actually wow. a mass exodus of, of of auditors. And I know one woman wow. who was on the St. Old Special Briefing course. Which is um, a huge course, by the way, guys. It's huge. huge. It's the biggest auditor course you can ever do. It's massive. outside of FEBC, I think, Flag Executive Briefing Course. I think they're both about the same size. Guys, these are volumes yeah, that you have to study. Really, it's check. really it's big. ridiculous. Yeah, it's big. And um, uh, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought now. So, what was yeah, the trigger point? Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was literally about to graduate, right? Which means she's been on that course for what, three, four years? At maybe least. longer. At, at least. least. Right? And she was about to graduate, and she was told, I'm sorry. Don't say. But it, your Chris, certificates for all, it. yeah, your certificates for all that briefing course have been cancelled. And if you want to do it again, you're going to pay for it again from the bottom up. And we're not talking about a certainty course version or whatever. Nope. It's literally nope. Nope. now. Nope. How would they justify that to her? And how did she not throw herself out the window? Um, she left. Yeah. Well, there you go. Can you? This might bring us into this question. Like again, what is? How would you explain David Miscavige clearly self imploding Scientology? It has to be. Is it his for his own financial gain? Why? How would you explain okay, that? Man? So I don't think he thinks he's self imploding Scientology. That's I believe. Yes. Yeah, he thinks he's doing the best he can. You're right, that, dude. You give such concise, great answers. That's a great point because, remember, guys, it's kind of like a split personality. Or if you try yeah, to figure you know, it out I logically, see, I see you can't. All these it won't, I see all these things like Dave Miscavige is a nutter and is this. Yeah, that. it's not yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, he believes in the tech. He's got a body thing grounding unit at Gold Base. He fucking believes in it, guys. He thinks he's, he's yeah. a sociopath. He's a psychopath. Yeah. He thinks he's doing the right yeah. thing. It the does. fact that yeah. everything's the reverse of that shows you basically his mentality. But he's not sitting and, there going, and, hmm, how can I fuck up Scientology? I don't think he is. Guess what, though? Him. His problem is, is that he doesn't listen to people on the ground like me. Well, why would he? He's what he, dude, you're not, you guys are nothing compared to him. Even Tom Cruise, his right hand man, he shits on him all the time. He's the man, he's the top. And he, and anybody mm. that gets in his closer, close circle, as you know, will yeah. reap the, 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 what, the wrath or whatever. Yeah. Mar Martha says, are auditors given religious legal confidentiality protection in the UK? No. Really? They are not. Would you care to expand on that, or it's just yeah, sure. Point? I mean, Scientology in the UK is not a recognised religion. Um, it has no the priest penitent privilege file that appears on the front cover of preclear folders is non is is not holds no legal uh, power. Interesting. Now that leads up to a question I've always wondered about, or that people have a question on. 
<laughs> so they don't have religious tax exempt in the UK, right? No, they don't know. Okay, so how would you explain? Um, and believe me, guys, I want this to go too. But here in the US and other places, they are recognized as a religion. So people think that if they get their tax exempt removed here in the US, for example, um, that Scientology will what go away, shrink or whatever. No. How would you explain? No, 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 can no, you no. can you talk on that for a minute, man? Yeah, I can man. So um if Scientology loses its tax exempt status in the United States, it will still exist and for a very long time because so. they have a lot of money. Millions of dollars, my friends. Yeah, I don't Real think Dave Miscavige, Dave Miscavige has probably already got contingency plans in place for that. I can yeah, almost right. guarantee it. Again, man, you would know, and I, I agree with you just based on yeah. my little, little knowledge. Yeah. Alonzo says, again, note to law enforcement. Amen, brother. Please read, please raid the Birmingham org and confiscate the PC folders of those pedophiles. Any questions? I mean, that's a that's a logical uh, response. Why wouldn't they be allowed to do that? Uh, why um, wouldn't they that be? Well, they answer? could. I mean, I I should really. They? Well, I should because no one's reported. It. Do you? I'm not going to ask you that question because that's. I am, I assume that you have an idea about what you're going to do with that. Well, one love, how am I supposed to know what great question was asked? And I didn't ask it. It's you guys in the comments. So applaud yourself. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, Alonzo. I mean, this is where the part that drives me nuts. There's so much red tape. There's so many ins and outs. You can buy yourself out of anything. This is why Hubbard has policies talking about how easy the justice system can be, the justice system can be manipulated, particularly when you have power and money. So, you know, it's just a miracle that Danny Masterson got convicted. I mean, how impossible was that? So it shows yeah. you that there can be justice. But then you see something like what he just described about, is that not enough to uh, hand over the PC files and have an investigation in Birmingham? Apparently not. These things seem to be, you know what, Chris, no matter what happens, I've seen this fucking everybody gets excited. And I saw another video the other day, the end of Scientology. Bro, I've been watching freaking this thing since Operation Snow White and before. Mm -hmm. Do you have any opinion on what the hell it's actually going to take to get a criminal uh, indictment and get this thing shut down? What what gives? Well, talking opinion? about Operation Snow White, I mean, David Gaiman, who's Neil Gaiman's dad, mm -hmm. uh, and right. Sheila Gaiman, his mom, were very good friends of mine. Really? Oh, yeah. And Neil Gaiman was actually the executive director of Birmingham Warg at one point. No shit. He was. Um, he was. Uh, I, I've, I've seen letters from him addressed from the executive director of Birmingham Org, from Neil Gaiman. It wasn't for long, but he was. Lady again, thank you. Question, no confidentiality protection. How does that work? Does that leave auditors vulnerable, vulnerable by law? Great question. That is a good question. Um, does it leave auditors vulnerable by law? Well, yeah, I guess it would. I mean, yeah. Unfortunately, yes. What's he supposed to do? He wants to help people. He believes in the cause. He yeah. has to follow these policies to, it's the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics. We yeah. believe that we're helping. So yeah. we are get set up. I didn't do anything too criminal, but at the OT, before you get onto the confidential levels, which are called the operating date levels, yeah. they put you through his... Mm -hmm. you went through those too right so you know that they get yeah. every single thing on you and they what they tell you is if you unburden yourself and tell all mm -hmm. that is how you get case gain in other words how ironic is it chris that being honest is at the utmost importance to get spiritual advancement mm -hmm. and yet how that actually plays out especially when you snap out of it and realize how reversed everything is in your world isn't that another mind fuck well, let me tell you what the biggest mindfuck is, right? That mm -hmm. Alarach says that in the existence of any over or withhold, no case gain can occur. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me, right, that that tech is so outstanding and so phenomenal and so life-changing that a bloke who was jerking off that morning will not make any benefit from it because he's simply not telling it you. Come on. Do you do you remember the little policy which is kind of hidden and it's uh, I'll have to pull it up at some point. Do you remember that? I might get this wrong because I have to refer to it. Mm -hmm. But I remember Hubbard saying that secretly to someone that he knew that it wasn't all about overts. And he said the only reason people yeah, really leave, there you, 
Ah, I see. You know your tech, young man. Yep. Isn't that fascinating, though? Even he knew, bro, how much he was really manipulating us. He was yeah. an evil fucking guy, man. He changed his mind on what makes people leave Scientology, and not many people know it. Um, but he changed his mind, and he said it's ASU breaks. It's not with holds at all. Do you want to explain to the audience that might not know what the what sure. that means about the significance of that? Okay, so a withhold being an undisclosed contra survival act to which you are not discussing, wow. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and an ARC break. So you have the ARC triangle of affinity, reality, and communication. And in the middle of that triangle is understanding. And the bigger the triangle, the more the understanding. And you increase that triangle by increasing one point of that triangle. So the more you communicate with somebody, the more reality and affinity you have with them, then the understanding gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. If one of these corners breaks, the whole thing snaps and all understanding diminishes. Right? Yep. So, yeah. So for years, LRH put in policy that people leave Scientology because of withholds. And he then changed his mind and said, no, it's because of ARC breaks. And that's a secret too, because that blows a hole yeah. in why you would pull someone's stuff. And that's the only problem that there is. And once you get that, in comes case game. But the reason people leave, another word for ARC breaks in this analogy would be upset. Yeah. So people get upset and he knows that. You know, it's a pretty clever trap, Chris, because every out, he reframes like traumatizing someone as case game. Every yes. out by being upset has a case reason or a special step in an auditing or ethics action yeah. in which to explain away that upset, yeah. get yeah. you back under control and yeah. carry the fuck on. It's yeah. quite brilliant. I mean, I don't, I want to, as I've said before, find out where Elron Hubbard's buried, pull him out of the ground and beat the living shit out of his dead body. That's what I really felt like doing. And then, you know, <laughs> I don't want to say what else I want to do, but let's just say I was really f the anger I can't even explain. Really? But he, but, oh, dude, I was considering, I realize now looking back, I wasn't going to do it, but I was considering blowing up their building, mm -hmm. killing my parents, and then killing mm -hmm. myself. And I threatened right. my parents uh, on, I just tried to, bro, uh, I'm not going to get into it here, but uh, let's just say All I right. spent a long time trying to, um, Mm -hmm. negotiate with my parents so i wouldn't lose them but my yep. inner self was telling me i will not back i will not go back and i will not be silenced and i will only find my own truth and i'm not going to have my parents are, whatever i lose it's worth it so i tried everything from crying to they screen their calls so they mm -hmm. would never i could never even talk to them wow. one day you know my dad actually picked up the phone and he was completely robotic and I couldn't believe he picked up and I was crying. I went hysterical many, many times on their answering machine mm -hmm. and I did threaten them and I made sure because I was thinking about taking them out. Like I said, I wanted to take out, I don't know why someone, I oh God, I hate saying this because I don't want to encourage anybody to do this, but I want to get a point across the point of how yep. the, I can't express the anger. I wanted to do something to them. Not, I don't know where I'd find a bomb. I, I don't know why somebody hasn't shot up the place. Again, I feel like I shouldn't be saying this, but I just want to get across. Like, right. I was serious, I felt, at the time. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. I lost everything. Oh, God, why is this happening? And this went on for at least 10 years. Every day, every second of every day, I couldn't turn it off. I couldn't explain it to my friends. Mm -hmm. I just let it go, continue on with acting. This, I was, this is my life. I was in a dissociated uh, state of mind. Right. And was and I didn't have a, a kind of a mind to work with, and I my aggression was extreme. So, in a heated moment when I was considering, okay, I got my plan. You know, I'm going to jump off the building. I couldn't do the gun thing because I didn't have the money to get one because I'm homeless. And I'm just like, I think the building is the best way to do it. But how do I get them first? And then I threatened my parents and I said, I said it multiple times over a couple of days. I said, make sure you get this on your answer machine. You know, this is fucking real shit. I'm going to come over and slice your throat. It was bad, uh, Chris. And just, just wow. can I say something on that real quick, man, sure. before we move on, just to, re yeah. to not to, le to resolve that and just to, to, to there's a semi happy ending. Get it all out, Doug. Get it all out. Okay, man. Okay. Go for it. So I have not had a relationship with my parents for 
15 years about. I left in January 2008. And um, while I was in the cult, it was all about, it wasn't even a real relationship. I didn't even really know who my parents were. The auditor handles handles everything between the family. So it keeps a barrier between who who are we even? You know, it's mm. so weird. I did, In other words, I didn't really know my parents. And then when my heart opened up, my emotions opened up, uh, when I started to get out, they were so extreme that I could barely handle it. And so when I threatened my dad, um, and for years of getting out, I was a danger to them. And I would, like I said, either cry, threaten, I tried everything. Mm -hmm. Now, for many years, I stopped that. I finally hit this point, Chris, where I said, I'm not going to get them back. I'm not to play God and try to snap right. them out. Because you know what I figured out is, you know what? I need to process the anger. I have an acting class and I get roles here and there to be able to express that. That's going to be my psychotherapy. And it's their life. They actually have every right to make the choices that they make and they take the consequence of that. So I realized, you know what? I'm needing them to change, to not be Scientologists for me mm -hmm. to carry on with my life. And is that not the same thing that they were doing to me? You need wow. to become a Scientologist. Or you can't, we, went, we can't really accept you. So finally, after all the emotional charge or whatever, I, I calmed down. Yeah. And, but that was an unbelievably long process. So my okay. dad my dad passed a few months ago at the age of, I believe, he was just about to turn 83. He's an OT8. And okay. right before that, about six months ago, we can only do good roads, good weather emails. So only if we have to talk about something would I be able to even email them. And I always had to go through mom. I mm -hmm. couldn't talk to dad. So I... I didn't even know that really. I just always would hit up mom. But one day, maybe more like a year ago, I emailed my dad either on accident or I didn't know that I was, I didn't know what he was feeling. So he wrote me back this really vicious thing that said, you threatened to slice my throat. Um, you're an SP. I didn't, he never disconnected from me before. Chris, he never said it. I never right. got a disconnect letter or anything. This, this is yeah. fairly recent. Yeah. Don't talk to me. So that fucking stung, man. Cause I, Okay. I never heard that out of his mouth. And I also didn't know that he was on his deathbed and he was suffering for a while. My mom still hasn't told me what happened and how he died. She's still trying to process. But the fact that we had these little emails going back and forth is unbelievable. The fact she even let me know he died. Thank mm. God. Because you know how they suppress. We can't even find out our relatives die. If they're Scientologists, no one's going to tell you. That's right. So, so, so to make a little bit a happy point where... I knew my dad because of the amount of indoctrination was never going to snap out of it. He, he, mm -hmm. I think he needed that belief system and that's okay. It's just sad all around. But the fact that he was holding on to that when I had, he didn't know that for the many years I love him. I, I don't hate him at all. And I have no desire to harm my family or anybody. I processed it. So I, I'm like, do you really feel that way? I can't believe you remembered that. I haven't attacked you forever. Haven't you noticed that? Or is that the church whispering to you and getting in your ear? Whatever mm -hmm. it was, it was really weird. And so I wrote back right before he passed, Dad, mm -hmm. I love you. You're the only dad that I have. Disconnection only means something in Scientology. You're always going to be my dad no matter what they say. Mm -hmm. And so I just left the message like that. And the mom wrote back and said, Dad accepts your... And I said, I'm sorry. I don't feel that way. I love you. Now, he couldn't accept responsibility that he had done something wrong. So he said, "Dad, ex my mom says, Dad accepts your apology. Mm -hmm. and thank you for that message that for me brother was a huge that's the best i could hope before my dad exited nice. this world it's nice but it's been in a way it's all really sad chris because if scientology didn't come into our life you know we could have had i think a relatively i feel like i dream a parallel life sometimes in my dreams about what mm -hmm. life could have been and was supposed to be if the yeah, psychopath too. Hubbard never created these policies in the first place, yeah, my dad yeah. never saw that ad in the newspaper innocently at the bottom of that newspaper one day. Like yeah. just one incident, like you, Chris, one moment in time changed mm -hmm. fucking your entire path. And we can never go back and relive the life we were supposed to, supposed to live. It's such a weird, I'm always in two heads at the same time, you know? I know what you mean. Uh, and I, I agree with you in, in some respects. I mean, Scientology tore apart my by a family um, when I got declared. So I know, I know your pain. I know your pain too. Is that as kind of a time to segue into, do you, do you, Chris, do you want to get into that and finish yeah. the story here? Or do you want, it's totally up to you. You can, we can always do a video too. You can get it out now. You can take a break. No, whatever, no, I know what, now. okay. Do you want to take a couple of questions before you leave into yeah. it? Do you want to do you want yeah, Okay. Sure. Let's people do have some good stuff. 
I just know what you're about to say, man. And maybe we should put a couple questions in between before we get into additional heavy shit. So take a deep breath. These are these are pretty easy. Hey, Martha. Uh, okay, uh, I think we already answered this, right? Yeah. Oh, just give me, okay. Yeah. Let me just get rid of the ones we have. Um, Chow asked, does the UK have the same statutes of limitation like the US does? Did, did we cover that? or No, we did not. And okay. it depends on the crime. Mm. So uh, I know that violent rape in certain states, the statute of limitations does not apply in America. In the UK, it varies. It depends on the actual crime. Um, I would say child molesting. Um, if I, no, I'm not going to say, I would say, I know for a fact that child molesting has no statute of limitations. So you can be arrested for something you did in 1976 if it involves sexually abusing a child today. Yeah. Here's another good question. Um, okay. uh, I'm not sure if it's Shana or Shanna. So I'm, a, I'm sorry, Shanna, if I pronounced that wrong. May we ask what financial incentives they promised Chris? For auditor, as we know, other SO staff are stuck at 50 bucks a week. Good okay. question. Yeah, it's a good question. So there were actually some weeks when I made pretty good money. Well, I wouldn't say pretty good money. I mean, in a week, I can earn now what I can in a day. So, but there were times when I made three, four hundred pounds a week auditing. That's a lot for a staff member. Yeah. And that was because your stats were up. You got a Sure, yeah, you get bonuses. Kind of you get auditor bonuses. So, um, but there were times when there was no pay. Yep, and that's because your stats were down. And no, no, it's because the, the nothing was sold. Oh, okay, right. Generally, you get a part of the gross you, income of the week, right? Yeah, and the pay went down considerably when the ideal org strategy started, because um, a public were being enriched for ideal org donations and not services anymore. Exactly. So that of course, in, in fact, we staff. became, we didn't become a service org. Uh, we became a, uh, a building registration org. Service was secondary. That's incredible. But again, yeah, it was that's... incredible to me to see it happen right before I my bet. I fucking bet. eyes. I'm like, I'm here to audit. I'm not here to buy a fucking building. Fuck your building. Like so, literally I'm like, we're here to clear the planet. No, not not buy real estate. What? Like it made absolutely no sense to me at all, and still doesn't. I'm kind of surprised and not surprised about why you were the only one that actually asked the obvious question. How insane that was! Surely, people, you know what they just yeah, mostly kept their what? mouth shut and left. No, yeah, deep down, everyone fucking knew. I could see it in their eyes. Really, they they fucking knew, and but. They didn't have the balls to say anything. And they were clapping and cheering at events yeah. and holding yeah. fundraisers. And deep down, yes. it was all fucking fake. Mm -hmm. I saw deep that down, too they're the thinking, Yeah. Deep down, they're thinking, well, actually, you know, uh, aren't we supposed to clear the planet? But And then sort of in their head, you can see that they're thinking, well, if we get this building and reg everybody, even though it's a bit of downtime for service, Everyone will flock to that building. I know that's how they. That's I'm glad you said that because that's how people justify it in their brain. Yeah. And that's how it's always. And guess what? No one fucking flocked. I don't know it would happen. So wow. Eva, I was in the Sea Org during Operation Snow White and was sec checked to the point of physical pain because they thought I was FBI or CIA. How many times uh, on the list? Eva, my God. I know, Eva. I feel so sorry for you. Do you want to explain, Chris, what she's talking about? Because I can't tell you how many times okay. uh, I got asked if I was a agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was, um, so she was in the Sea Org, and Operation Snow White was the uh, where they put undercover agents um, and basically raided uh, the, the the FBI and was taking documents and this and that and sending intelligence back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and then. She, she was given what's called a security check, which is uh, an intensive procedure whereby you are completely unhinged and you can write whatever questions you want to write. And there's no LRH reference on what questions you can ask. You can ask anything you like. And she was probably grilled to the point where she was, what the fuck is going on in my head? Like, you know, yeah. Eva, we feel your pain. I can't tell you how many sex checks I had. And I seem to recall that 
it was either because Hubbard was overly paranoid and this didn't happen, or there were, you know, there were, of course, people trying to get in. And uh, yeah, do you know what's and, weird, and, Doug? Yeah, yeah. Is that I didn't get that many sex checks while I was in, despite my attitude. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Because of the value I don't know. that you represented? I did OT preparations, which is, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, OT eligibility, which is a massive mm -hmm. set check. Yeah. I had a set check at the end of leaving staff. And I think that was the only set checks I had wow. in my entire time. Yeah. I'm surprised that they didn't sec check you a lot, Chris, knowing that you might be the guy uh, that has the data that's going to run out of here and they got to definitely keep tabs on this troublemaker. You know, I'm surprised they didn't yeah. really dig on you on that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Very interesting. Yes. Shayna, if they lose their illegal tax exemption, the funds will drain fast. There is already so much pending litigation. If that happened, I can imagine many more will be filed. What say thee, Chris? Yeah, uh, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, none of us are saying don't take their tax exempt status away. It's just not a, it would be a slow roll, right? They would, do, do you think they would slowly die uh, if just the tax exempt status was removed in the uh, US, for example? No. no. Can you explain why you'd say that? Because uh, uh, they don't have uh, tax exempt status in, in Europe. And yes, it's declining, but not at a rate that would see it end its demise anytime soon. So the taxes are not the be all end all on being able no. to drain them financially. They have enough money. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Question. Read the Australian victims of trafficking. U.S. judge directed them to do Scientology, quote, arbitration. Why didn't they bring the case in Australia when they didn't have the same religious BS? Do you under religion BS? Do you understand that question? Well, let me read it again. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. And don't, uh, Troy, anybody in the comments after the video publishes, if it has an answer to that, um, please leave in the comments. Cause I'd like to know that too. And L. Yeah, Ron Hubbard too. says, uh, hi from the UK. You recognize this man. Do you not? <laughs> He's yeah, very funny. I, I, by clapped the way, I clapped him every day for 17 years. I know. I know. By the way, Arwan, it's really good to see you. I haven't seen you for a while, and he's very, very funny. He literally assumes the beingness of Hubbard in the chat, even though he was never a Scientologist. I missed you, bro. Good to see you back, Hubbard. Not the real one. Okay, so now that we've had a little bit of an intermission, would you like yep. to talk about how you segued out of... So we know yeah. that what caused you to question shit. How did you act from there, and then what was the sequence of events? Mm. So I sort of left, and uh, I was working on making money, for my family and you mean make money more money and make more money make others make money make make them make money is that the policy you're referring to <laughs> yeah but uh so i was uh spawning my career again revamping it as a professional musician and uh awesome. i did do that successfully and uh Good and i was i was doing well financially and we had debt from being on staff between me and my wife uh to the tune of around twenty two thousand pounds i think it was and it's not super up. horrible. It could be. A, it spent a lot. It's not worse super than horrible. Other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is the free, freeloaders. This is not the freeloaders' debt. This is on credit cards or oh, something. Chris? No, I never had a freeloader because uh, I left staff at the end of my contract. Because you actually finished it, which yeah. says again something about your integrity. You're going to finish it out despite having yep. many, many reasons, not least the pedophilia, to leave a long time before. I mean, you wanted yeah. to honor your freaking contract, right? Yeah, and you believed and I did. in it. Yeah, I did. good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had no, no freeloader, nothing. And um, so I was uh, working and then me and my ex-wife had a pact that we would never, ever get into debt for Scientology again. And at this point, she was clear. And I had audited her to clear myself. Wow. Yeah, I did it. I did all of her bridge. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so we decided that you know, for her to do OT levels or whatever, we're going to make money because we've got children and we want to buy a home. And, you know, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of plans. Mm -hmm. So anyway, come a few months later, um, she started acting a bit funny. I was wondering why. And then I found out from her sister that she was taken to St. Hill and crush wrenched for 25 to 30,000 pounds in credit card debts for her OT levels. And she took out seven cards wow. and I didn't even know about it. And she, wow. she hid it from, she hid it from me. Yeah. And at that point, 
I kind of knew my marriage was over, really. I thought, if she can do that, I can't really recover from this, really. So I sort of carried on, plodding on, and I didn't go in the org. I refused. And then I, 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 I was angry at her, and I told her what I fucking thought about doing that after the pact that we made, that we'd never do that. She then reported me to St. Hill for being uh, disaffected, uh, stopping bridge progress, this and that. And then that just started a whole avalanche of me being the class A asshole. Yeah. And stopping people from going. The the quote was, stopping people from going up the bridge. Yep. That was me. Even though I'd spent 17 years doing the complete opposite. Doesn't matter how much time, doesn't matter how much you put in. As soon as you're done and over, your service doesn't count for anything. You immediately turn into a suppressive person, literally trying to hinder mankind's only hope. Correct. And And it's serious. Yeah, and all I was doing was trying to provide a home for my family. So anyway, she did that, and then that started that, and then she... Um, Scientology will have different versions of this, by the way. I understand In my declare, there was, ver- there was very different versions of what actually occurred. So um, then she, um, uh, she did her OT sections, and then during her OT sections, she uh, had an affair with uh, an auditor in Birmingham. So, yeah. And do you know what? This is the worst bit, Doug. This affair was encouraged by the staff of Birmingham Walk. Yes. Can you explain that mind? Yeah, because I was, that would be? because I was quote unquote off lines, mm-hmm. right? And I, I you finished your contract and you were yeah. trying to be a musician and put that behind yeah. you for a while. But I was disaffected because I wasn't going in the org, right? So this guy, um, Osa, actually coordinated this guy to actually get with her and destroy my family do you guys hear what he just said could you say that one more time sure osa coordinated this guy who was living with the director of special affairs who is osa and coordinated and pushed him to take my wife and steal her away from me on purpose can you explain that why that op why they did that operation what the plan because was. they wanted yeah because they wanted me out the picture and uh because i was quote unquote not on lines and quote unquote disaffected with golden age of tech too because i told people to this is what happens right guys when you get caught in the trap and it all yeah. looks rosy until you have an awakening and understand that Scientology is an illusion. It's fake it doesn't deliver anything that it says it does. I want to actually ask you about the state of clear real quickly too. Um so all of this is justified. It broke up his family. He um, is now evil. They're going to rip his entire marriage. They're going to freaking set his wife up to be enticed to cheat. Yep. They're going all of he of everything he just described. The fucking guy's just trying to be a musician. He just worked for 10 years, man. 9 a.m. Uh, to freaking 10 p.m. He just wants yeah, to even and I'm also, take a I'm break. Tra- He's not even talking out. And this, no. is, this is how they handle this. They're like, we must destroy this man's life. And yep. they did. Mm-hmm. And all for fucking what, dude? For what? Uh, I for mean, the fact that, for the fact that they wanted me out of the picture because I knew things. Yeah. That was going on in Osa, specifically with those terminals in Osa mm-hmm. at the time, that would make people's hair stand on end. So, and they knew that I knew, mm-hmm. and they wanted me out. And that's why you were such a threat, and why they would go yeah. to such an op to handle yeah. you. Yeah, because their PR. Go on, sorry, Dave. No, 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 go. Because their their PR was so high, and I knew things that would literally crush them. Wow. And they knew that I knew, and they wanted me out fast and quick. So, anyway, they encouraged this affair. I couldn't get over the fact that she'd done this. Really, Uh, Um, I don't blame you. Yeah. So, um, um. I don't want to get into other things particularly really sure. about that because sure, it's a bit, man. Sure, bit personal. Man. But anyway, let's just say our, our, our marriage and relationship ended. Okay. Yeah, and okay. I moved out. Um, and then oh, uh, a bit of time later, I started seeing another girl because guess what? Scientology didn't have my back. Everybody I knew had completely betrayed me. Um, Nobody wanted to talk to me because I was 
this effective the golden age of tech too and the idea mm-hmm. of all track um no one wanted to talk to me so i started dating this girl um i went out with this girl for a short time and it didn't really work out and i ended it with her and guess what happened next my ex-wife and osa became friends with her on purpose and then one time they sh- when i went to collect my stuff from her house um they showed up and um my ex-wife shouted at me saying so you're you're having sex with her do you want to fucking have sex with your own kids as well shall i bring Are them you- here Fuck no, she her. said this. Fuck her. I mean, she's she's completely radicalized to no the point shit. where oh, that's an understatement. Oh, she feels that if the bridge is gone, her eternity is done for. I hate that's to say it. that it's... I understand that feeling. I know. Yeah, she's I... almost like Al Qaeda. Mm-hmm. That's a great I mean, example. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. Scientology is a radicalized religion. There's no such thing yeah. as being a part-time Scientologist. No, it... she would die for the cause. Yeah, I would have too, man. That's what's so terrifying. And anybody that wakes up out of this like you, dude, at least you get to live with the truth and you had an opportunity to get away from that. Yeah. You could still be in there, Chris. Anybody that yeah. gets out of this thing is given a second life, man. And a well, second it, get, it gets worse, Doug. So this girl who, who I was dating after we split up heard this accusation from my ex-wife that I want to say by saying, do, do you want me to bring your own kids here so you can have sex with them as well as her, right? She overheard that. She... Then reported me to the police. Right? And there was a whole police investigation into me being a pedophile. Can you fucking believe this shit? Right? I would so, say no, but I know I know and, I know what they do. And then someone started a rumor in Birmingham Org, and I have this on good authority, that Chris Malin is now into children. And this spread. Oh my God, this is what they do. Yeah. So they did this and uh, I had a police investigation and the the police confiscated some of my personal property uh, in the process. Uh, they did this whole investigation and it came to nothing. Unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah, because you didn't fucking do anything. So did, of course you, I did. did they press charges against the people that, that uh, made allegations no. that were complete bullshit? You got and no I would never do that. that. I, I love my children. Oh and I would, God, I would take, I take it, I would take a bullet for my kids, right? So, um, but those few weeks when this investigation was ongoing, was one of the worst periods of my fucking life. I can only imagine, man. It was absolutely horrendous, and it was all being pushed by Osa. Now this ties into my declaring my comment, right? This gets even worse, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, anyway, so the police come back to me and they give all my property back, and they say, yeah, nothing. Uh, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. I'm like, what? yeah, my reputation's destroyed. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Sorry for the and I had, I had, yeah, I had the police call me, social services call me, saying you're not allowed to see your children during the period of the investigation. Uh, I had social workers uh, oh visiting God, me, Chris. saying, yeah, I, I was fair. I just like to point out, I was completely fair gamed, and I wasn't even declared. It's because of how pro- how high profile you were and the dirt yeah. that you had. So the higher up you get, the more you care, the more you invest, the worse you're going, the more you're going to be fair game when you get out because of your yeah. status and the secrets that you can spill, which is why it's so important that yeah. you're just starting to tell your story. I mean, I yeah. get a feeling you haven't even begun yet. No. And it was disgusting. Anyway, so when that ended, um, uh, which it did do with nothing happening, um, obviously because I never did anything anyway, it was just mm-hmm. noise. It was what they call in Scientology a noisy investigation. Yep. So they wanted you to know that this was going on to intimidate you and scare oh, the yeah. shit out of you. And it got even worse because so then I got, the, I think this was six months to a year later, I got an email from the uh, Continental Justice Chief mm-hmm. um, who, uh, uh, yes, it was heart wrenching to be accused of that. Thank you, Jane. It was awful, actually. It's the most disgusting thing you can say about any man, isn't it? Let's face it. And they know that. And they yeah, also have no proof, obviously. So I'm of wondering why did. on earth they can't be sued for making such a false allegation that even though you're, you know, nothing was found, that doesn't go away and it's it smashes a person's reputation to put it to put it slightly. Yeah, it does. So then I got an email from the Con Justice Chief um, saying that you need to come down to St. Hill for a committee of evidence. So I'm like, oh my God. Chris. And guess what? Guess what, Doug, right? I've never in my entire time Scientology, 
even had a court of ethics. Wow. I never had any justice at all in my entire time. And this was the first time, and it was straight to Kalmev. Which is, in fact, if your listeners don't know, there is uh, a list of steps that have to happen before a committee of evidence can be convened. And a committee of evidence is considered the most severe form of justice action. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So uh, I got called down for a committee of evidence. So I went there. And, oh, my God, I could not say anything. There was four SEALG members sitting in that room staring at me for two Holy hours. Holy shit, man. Did you think you were going to get whacked? I mean, that's terrifying. What, they were staring at me, just staring at me for two hours. And they were pulling out reports from, like, 17 years ago of just complete nonsense of a time I, I upset somebody in a corridor. I mean, literally, it was just any dirt anything they could actually fucking find they just dug it all up and i thought to myself at this time i thought they just want me out and they want me declared fast mm -hmm. because they were just yeah they were digging up whatever they could find anything so um and then there was a time when i was with this girl who i was with after after my relationship ended with my wife which it did and i'd moved out and uh, I sent her, I had sent her some photos that people would deem inappropriate. But as you do in a relationship, especially when you first start, this is what people do sometimes. And people can deny it, and but it's true, you do. And guess what? In that committee of evidence they had on the desk, those fucking pictures of my fucking junk that I'd sent to this chick. And they're all sitting there staring at it, oh, looking, my. looking at my dick. What the fuck is yeah. that? Is that prosecutable? Is that legal? To, yes. It to... is. No, it's not legal. And yes, it's prosecutable. So anyway, I, fuck, dude. I looked at them and I was fucking horrified. First question I had in my head was, how the hell did you get them? And then I found out that Osa had befriended this woman to get as much dirt on me as possible. And she sent them all these images. She sent them to my ex-wife, who they, they became friends afterward. Oh, and, my God. Yeah, and Scientology were pushing the point that I knew this woman and was having an affair with this woman while I was still married. And that's so not they true turned everything around yes. on you when the opposite yes. your wife yes. was being set up by them to have an affair isn't that amazing yes. how they so project? while i was married yeah while i was married and while i was in the relationship um i never met this woman it wasn't until months after we split up and i'd moved out mm -hmm. that i first met her but scientology seemed to think different and what i think that they must be just making it up because they want me out so mm -hmm. Um, anyway, they had pictures of my 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 junk all over the table, like three or four printouts, massive A4 sheets. I mean, we're not talking small pictures. We're talking massive A4 pictures. And there's three SEAL members in there. There must be like 18, 19, 20, oh three my girls. God, and they're staring dude. at my dick. They're looking at my oh. fucking dick in my comment. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. So anyway, my comment finished. Right. I went home. I emailed the CGC, uh, CJC, the Con Justice Chief, mm -hmm. and I said, I notice you have pictures, naked images of me in the comic. You need to destroy them immediately. And she replied and said, the following images have been destroyed. However, I looked into this further, and there is such a thing in the UK, there's a law, it's called revenge porn mm -hmm. law, right? And that is, the law specifically states that the sharing of indecent images without another's consent is a criminal offense and punishable by two to five years prison for everybody who's viewed it. Wow. So, yeah, but guess what? My comment file not only did go locally to St. Hill, went up lines to Mike Ellis. He would have saw those images as well mm -hmm. of my fucking junk, right? It went all the way to the top of the International Justice Chief, Mike Ellis. And I was told that I had personally pissed off chairman of the board. Good for you, man. 
I mean, the consequences of that, because I was, that's, I've never heard them. I don't know what's gone down and, you know, committees of evidence are brutal, but I've never heard anything like that before. And you must have pissed off the queen bee, oh, yeah. so to speak. So obviously yeah. David Miscavige saw your junk too. Probably. And probably. Uh, I'm, I'm like, pretty 90% probably sure. Yeah. Probably liked it too. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, man. Um, I don't even know what to say. I just need to take it, take that in for a minute. Cause I mean, you've just been fucked on so many levels and so set up trying to get out. Did you, for people that are surviving and trying, or that are in this position that are listening to this podcast, did you, yeah. do you have any, what do you have any pointers or what kept you from acting violently, taking your own life? Did you, how did you feel and how did you deal with this to get um, through it? I was, I was suicidal a little bit. I have to be honest, um, especially mm -hmm. during the police investigation. Um, even though I knew I was completely innocent, it's still mm -hmm. horrible to be in the hands of a police investigator. I understand, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, especially with especially over nothing as well. When you know it, you didn't do anything. Yeah, of course. Did the investigation go on for some time or did you, was it pretty quick? I mean, how, uh, much, about, how long? It was about two to three weeks, if I remember right. Did you find yourself able to recover from the rumors or does that stick with you because they did that? I still think that they probably have that rumor in the org. Yeah, holy, and that's how they yeah, explain it. Yeah, it's completely away. fabricated. It's just, it's just completely made up. Yeah, holy it's not based shit. on any facts at all. Yeah, Alonzo makes a point of <clears throat> every person who viewed those pictures and forwarded them are guilty of a felony, including Mike Ellis, the esteemed international justice chief. Is it's so correct. that's true. Yeah, it is. can well, I um... in UK law it is okay. Okay, I'm not sure about US law. I don't know. And I'm not sure that if sexting is a crime, I guess a lot of people are guilty. Can you clarify that that's not what we're talking about? Uh, it's the use oh. of sexting, uh, the pictures that uh, were forwarded that's the crime. Of course, you can <laughs> stack you, but you can't hand them over while he's sitting and is looking at his freaking junk. Doug, can I just get some water? By... water sure, water, please, please. please. Okay, I'll take some seconds, questions. Absolutely, seconds. absolutely. One love, I'll ask him um, this question when he gets back. Um, he has, he sees his children, as far as I understand, two to three times a week. Apparently in the UK, it always sides with the woman, no matter what, basically, from my understanding and talking to Chris last night. So even though he has custody, you heard what his um, ex did to him and how she set him up and what her character must be uh, and how she must see her kids, you know, from that. And yet she was the one that was basically, you know, given uh, most of the custody. And I'll clarify that with Chris when he gets back. And then I'll ask him this one too, lady, about do you think auditors stay in longer than others? Chris, a couple of quick questions. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. He's got to put it in his headphones. What's that? What's that question? Okay, we'll cover that one next. So, Chris, yeah. do you think auditors stay in longer than others? Yeah, 100%. What's the defining factor? Uh, the amount of work you put in. Exactly. The more you put in, the more the yeah. cost fallacy applies. Yeah. Exactly. Do you see your children now? Yes, I do. How often? Uh, uh, pretty much every weekend, yeah. Except my daughter, she's 15, and she is very much sort of a Scientologist. And sucks, she sort of discon yeah, she's tried to sort of disconnect from me like a week and a half ago. Um, she won't be allowed on service while being in communication with me. That's for sure. How do you think that's going to play out, man? Like, what, what, how do you, does that create a strain <laughs> when you see your daughter? Yeah, knowing that her mom's talking evil shit into her ear. Oh yeah, I'm Mr. Bad Guy. I am in the relationship. Yeah, I'm the, so I'm, the, I'm the bad suppressive person, Dad over in the corner who's lost everybody i mean you have to understand oh shit we lost him chris we lost your voice so you know what you know what to do he's gonna pop in and pop out but we got pretty far without that happening so he'll be back um jesus christ man i need a break because oh this is some fucking heavy shit this guy poor guy's fucking talking he's been through okay you you're You've exposed to OT3, haven't you, Elrond? Yeah. That's a level I got to, by the way, before I literally went insane. 
Sound yeah. check, check, check. Okay, please continue, sir. Yeah, sorry. So, um, yeah. So I was in Scientology for so long that when I got declared, I lost all my friends. Um, everybody just sort of disconnected from me. Um, uh, my my best friend that I had over twelve years disconnected from me. Um, and it gets worse because, see, my cousin who's not a Scientologist mm -hmm. and my best friend were good friends as well. And he, he's OT8, he managed to convince my cousin to not communicate with me as well. So my cousin disconnected from me. Even though he's not a Scientologist? Yep. Yeah, that shows you how it works. They even got to him. How would a non-Scientologist like him justify uh, disconnecting when he's not under those policies? Is it, is it because he too is tied into family that are Scientologists and he'd rather... Nope. No, really? Not. Yep. Why would he side with them, do you think, and not you? Especially since he's not a Scientologist. Probably because my best friend told him that I'm a pedophile. <sighs> there you go. Chris, man, can I just take a moment? Just yeah. slow down here a second. I'm really fucking sorry what you went through, bro. It's I mean, awful. I know that doesn't cut it, but you horrendous. are a good man. I can tell that just spending well, this couple I'm hours trying. with you. Dude, you're a good guy, man. I don't even know anything about you, but I think it's pretty clear that not only did you not do all this shit you're accusing of, it's just amazing how the really good person got fucked in every possible way. And then the people that were fucking people over and, you know, pun in, no pun intended, the yeah. real evil people like the pedophiles just walked away scot-free. I mean, yeah. you, 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 you are textbook. The so guess inversion. what? Like, That's guess crazy what? So that what guy, you've been through, man. Those two guys who are pedophiles, mm -hmm. who I ordered, are not declared. And I am. And they're still Scientologists, as far as you know? Before, no, before they're you, not. Do, do no, you think they not. got declared? And Can I ask you a quick question on that? Yeah. Up to and when they become a liability. Maybe they're not giving as, uh, as much money. Maybe Scientology has no use for them anymore. At what point did they decide, like a Danny Masterson, that that pedophile becomes a legal, possible legal liability on the church and therefore we should get rid of them? Why do you think they would protect somebody like that? Is there a reason above and beyond the money, uh, the amount of money, or is it basically just that? It's pure cash. Yeah. It is. Like if yeah. those guys weren't donating, they would have been out in their ear. That's right. Do yeah. you think it's the fact that they could no longer donate why they aren't Scientologists and perhaps they got booted at that point, if you had to speculate? To be honest, I don't know. I mean, the, the second guy was abusing his son. He, he was in jail and he probably still is in jail. I, I, I've tried yeah. to Google it, but I can't find out. And the other guy left Scientology. So I wonder if they booted him out or if he left. Do you know if he specifically left or if he got ran out of money and they're like, uh, get out of here? I actually, six months ago, I saw his name in a... Uh, an ex Scientology group on Facebook. So I don't know. And I don't want to talk to him either. So yeah, I, understand I don't that. want to, I don't want to investigate and find out really. I understand. Is there along those lines, where do you stand today? How is your recovery going? Do you feel like a Scientologist mm. anymore? Do you feel decompressed? What's your state of mind and what's been your process to get to wherever you're at nowadays? Well, being OT five, mm -hmm. um, it has been difficult because, you know, you have these long sort of instilled beliefs. Um, but to be honest with you, when I did OT5, I thought mm -hmm. it was fucking nuts. Do you want to explain to people what's on OT5? Um, well, it's just more of what you do. Well, it's all OT level stuff. It's all like body fat and stuff, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's all the same shit. It's just deeper. It's yeah. As an OT3, can I ask you a question? Sure. Which I've been dying to know. Let me take okay. a little water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. So do you remember, Chris? The, well, I have to ask one quick question first. How on earth mm -hmm. were you able to get up to OT5? Um, mm -hmm. stat, um, getting up those levels is hard to do uh, anyways, because mostly yeah. when you get up to Talking stat, financially, you mean? Not necessarily that maybe too, but even time wise, because as a staff member, almost mm. no one gets up, gets to move up to that high level. Okay. So I can tell you exactly how out? I did it. Please. Well, yeah. So I paid, I did pay for OT one, two, and three. Of course you right? did. On a credit yeah. card. Mm hmm. Even though uh, you're staff. After I, even though I'm staff, after yep. I tested clear. And OT four and five, I was awarded by RTC. Because your stats were so up? Yeah. And because what I did was I worked 
at St. Hill doing OT preps and OT eligibility because I was already clear and trained to do that. And I would do that in the mornings and every intensive 12 and a half hours of auditing that I finished, they would credit that to my auditing account. I see. I see. And then yeah. as far as having the time to do it, how did they squeak? Cause that's a last priority, but you did pay for it, but even then it doesn't matter. So how did they, did they jerk you around and getting up those levels? Did they cram you through in a, in a couple of weeks? How did you work around your own auditing versus get your ass in that chair and audit? Well, I, I, I moved. I lived in East Grinstead for six months. I moved from Birmingham mm -hmm. and uh, I lived there. And, uh, and my whole purpose was to get from clear to OT3 at the time. But then when I finished OT3, um, they came up with this idea to do four and five and how I could do it. Right. So I did that. Yeah. What did you think of OT3 when you read the materials? I thought it was a joke at really? first. Yeah. And then the supervisor came over and was like, are you okay with this? I'm like, I said, dude, I went, so what's the, and this, and, that, and, that. and he goes, well, what does it, what do you material state? Exactly. Am I the only one that fucking believed in it? Because you know what, Chris, I had so much space opera indoctrination from the lectures and everything. So to me, mm -hmm. it wasn't too far out there when I got to Xenu. I was a little bit sure. excited. You know, I, <clears throat> I'm not going to disbelieve whatever Hubbard says. I'm waiting for this moment forever. My dad, you know, we couldn't talk about this and we, you know, you still can't talk about the levels, but my family mm -hmm. was excited. There was such, a, it took, bro, it took forever to get up there. Like, it's just, it's a long story, but I worked so hard to finally get to this day. So there was that part, Yeah. but I didn't think it was too much different than, uh, what I might, you know, have studied in the lecture. So I was excited mm -hmm. and, uh, me and my dad would look at each other with this, you know, knowing and this wink, wink, but we could never talk about our case. And it bonded me closer with my family too. Cause finally I was, you know, and there was another OT in the family. Yeah. It's all so ridiculous. It is. I went fucking mental, bro uh telepathically communicating to those freaking beings yeah. and trying to get them to go away and because i was so believing in it and delusional i would i felt amazing i felt like i was fucking free <gasps> beings man D did you did you get any of that feeling once yeah, you bought yeah, into yeah. it did, you know what I i'm just, talking about right yeah yeah it I felt do. amazing mm. fuck i know it's now not, yeah as an auditor of your level, yes. I need to know, does the yep. state of clear as mm -hmm. described in Dianetics, which initially got you into this whole mess, does it yep. exist? That's a great question. And here's my take on it, right? I think that it always exists in us, in everybody. That is heavy. I knew you'd give a fucking killer one line answer. <laughs> and guess what? All it takes is for that realization that you are that way for you to attest to the state of clear. But exactly, it's, all, it's already there it's in the everyone. I I get the beautiful message that you're communicating yeah. there exactly. But another like, thing is, is it's literally, literally that too. Yeah, yeah, literally everybody's sort of clear. Or shall we say has the potential to connect to the true self where you don't need any uh, gurus, cults, or Scientology, you know? The state yeah. of clear is sold as this miraculous thing, my friends, where to put it in layman's terms, you're there's a thing called the held down seven where our minds as human beings are like computers to give an analogy. And if you have a held down seven on a typewriter, you're always going to get wrong answers. So if you can mm -hmm. remove the held down sevens, i.e. the trauma, your mind will be able to think logically like a, a computer and therefore all the war, famine and every irrationality that causes us to fight and do all sorts of the things we don't like, that will all go away. That's the basic explanation in Dianetics, and it seems pretty freaking logical. Um, so on top of that, he says your IQ will increase dramatically, all sorts of claims mm -hmm. that are made. And even mm -hmm. he used to make some claims about how most of your problems are psychosomatic, and he got in trouble with the medical field, so he had yeah, to kind of push that to the side, right? But the claims mm -hmm. that are made in Dianetics are outrageous. But it was basically what the Buddha would call a state of enlightenment, yeah. where you kind of go through the dark night of the soul, you relieve your trauma, and then you have this enlightened state where you become one with all or something like that. And one of the things mm. that Hubbard would do is cut down all the philosophers, the great philosophers, and say, they almost got it right. The state of clear that the Buddha achieved, it never lasted. But in Scientology, all the things that these wisdom traditions claim they can give, you don't have to believe in it. 
You don't have to listen to me. We have yeah. a freaking science, scientology, and here's how incredibly laid out it all is. So mm. until you know any better, it can be very, if you, or if you don't know about it, it can be very, very convincing. And what a tasty, thrilling, pulling you in kind of um, gain. Who wouldn't want something like that? It's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah, and like and like you said, Chris, like the the clear cognition is to realize you were mocking up your own reactive mind, which puts you right in the state that you were beginning with. I swear, exactly. I think he was a troll. It, I think he was trolling it, us. And it, it tells you that it never actually existed in the first place. What, how, did you ever have any people that knew the? Because you're not supposed to, as an auditor, Chris, you wouldn't let them mm. know that. Oh, no. that's the clear no. cognition. It's a no, secret. No, no, no. So, because I, I never knew what the hell I said. Because I did I like see. the. Yeah, I never yeah, knew yeah. what I said. Neither and, did I actually at the time when I went clear. But yeah, were you able to before I um was you know got I I was a past life clear obviously not it's all kind of you know was in my head but I did up to the grades I skipped Ned because I had an origination on the FPRD the false purpose rundown that I was a past life clear and so we took that up mm -hmm. and I was spending session after session after session all sorts of incidents where I was, I blew a psychiatrist away in the last lifetime and then I was a Dianeticist and then you know all this stuff trying to find out what the hell that cognition would be. I tried mm -hmm. to cheat and look through the red volumes and the lectures. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he must've said it here somewhere. Did you ever have anybody figure it out? Did anybody that attested to clear know what the cognition was that they said to you? No. And you didn't know what your own cognition was. No. And that's what keeps the ultimate troll. Hey, you were just mocking it up all along in place. Yeah. Because, shit. <laughs> you were creating it all in the first place, mate. And then, as you know, OT8, when you finally get to uh, oh, the top yeah. of the bridge, all those identities that you had were actually your body thetans. Now you know who you're not, and you're willing to f willing and ready to find out who you really are. So it's exactly where you start. And the worst, yeah, it's, it's, up, it's back to where you started. And the worst troll is there's no OT9 and 10. <laughs> so you're fucked either way. And you've just spent, what, half a million pounds, and you're back to where you started. If anything, we can definitely say he was the ultimate troll, and there's a slight bit of genius within that madness that I, I just here's have to the worst thing. Though, here's the worst thing is that staff members honestly believe that OT nine and ten is coming soon. It's fucking sad, man. My poor freaking dad, dude, was like, and, and and if all the orgs go Saint Hill size, that's when they'll be released. And guys, they don't even exist. Oh, and no scientists know that. Chairman of the board would change the goalposts for the release of OT nine and ten while I was on staff at least four or five times. Really? Yeah. First it was uh, uh, St. Hill size. Then it was every org has got to be this size and um, uh, and the amount of people on the planet being in Scientology has to be X. And then right. it changed again. And it changed again. And I'm like, and then there was a rumor going around in the org. I remember for about three months, everyone was really excited that on the free wins, they are getting the rooms ready for the release. They're painting and decorating them. For the release of OT nine and ten, you know and this David room spread like wildfire. Wow, yeah. And there goes the money, and they uh, and they're still pulling the scam scam today. These poor people, and not only that, Chris, when they get up to OT eight, this is what's really weird and evil and like scary about it. Mm -hmm. The higher up I went up the bridge, the more my perception and options were squeezed. So as I was getting up to OT3, you know, you have to have a partner, a mate, a wife that is, has to be at your same case level. You know, yeah, your yeah, friends, yeah. you only kind of want to hang around OTs. Yeah. Your options get more and more limited. And yeah. I realized the end goal of this, and this would always scare me because I'm like, well, it's bringing me to the ultimate goal. I need to join the Sea Org and I need to join staff to be the most productive. I've just been <laughs> taking, taking, taking on the audience. So I see where this is leading. That means mm. I have to give up my acting dreams. And I was always terrified of getting up to the top because I knew I'd have no options but to do the most ethical thing and put on the fake sailor uniform and fucking join the Sea Org. And how many people did that, Chris, when they got up to OTA? They're, you know, some of them are 60 or 70 years old and they're put into a room and bombarded. Look, you got to the top of the bridge. You have the gains. Now you need to fucking join us, which you should have done all along. And 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 so many joined because they have no options. Their life is so... It, it's like a trap of the mind where they they just get their reality gets squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. It's so sick, it, man. It is sick. And it's just all about money, really. You said it. And, and Alan Hubbard would be more than happy to tell you that too. You know, it's and all he would, about and he would, money. And he would be more than happy to take it. Yep. Any day, every day. That really is the one thing that he cared about. 
and oh, having yeah. enough he money did. to run he, away yeah. if he got ever ever got challenged or caught. Absolutely. And you know, my my uh, I was telling you about my OT8 best friend in Scientology for a long time. When I got declared and I found out this stuff about that um Thank you, Chow. Chow, you can always count on. She's a she's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So um uh when I found out that he uh sorry, when I found out that there was no OT nine and ten and it will never happen, I actually emailed him and I said, Ben, I know you've disconnected from me. I know you've been declared, and I know you're OT eight. But in this lifetime, Ben, you will never, ever see OT nine and ten. What was his response? Nothing. Did like, he believe you? Do you think? Do you think you shocked him? I hope so. But do you know what? Even if he came back, if he if he left Scientology now and knocked on my front door and says, "Chris, I'm sorry," I still tell him to get the fuck off. Really? Yes. Wow, this guy must have really. F- Fucked you up, man. He must yeah, have been evil motherfucker he was supposed for you to, to say be, that. He was supposed to be my best friend. Oh, I know how that and feels. He, and he just disconnected from me completely and utterly. So fuck him. If like I even while I was in Scientology, if somebody told me to not talk to somebody who I wanted to talk to, mm-hmm. I would have told them where to stick it. Right? And yeah. so many people are so fucking weak and so true. fucking pathetic to the to the fucking words of a book that they will literally tear apart people's fucking lives yep. without any fucking second iota. This is why I suggest that they're subtly starting with the TRs on, shutting down your emotions and turning you into secondary sociopath because the people that we go in as cannot do the kind of things. My mom couldn't do the kind of things that she subsequently did without something like Scientology making that possible oh man okay well before i got some questions start here guys and please feel free as we i think we're winding down to 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 throw them at chris but i don't want to so i yeah let's do let's do some questions because i'm kind of like almost i think i've pretty much i don't think there's anything else for me i just want to make sure you got everything covered we've been going for two hours and 40 minutes which is amazing but are you sure i really hope i I really hope i haven't bored anybody or anything you, know. you haven't, dude, you haven't seen the chat. You not only haven't bored anybody, I, this is one of the more um, eye opening, um, deep dive, and fascinating. I'm sorry to use these words, ma'am, but I don't know how else to describe your story. So crazy, what you share with us, and so off the charts, evil, and all because you, I think it had to do, Chris, with the fact that you were a really good guy. I think the people they fuck up the most well, thank are, you, Doug. it's yeah. true though, man. It and is, that yeah. makes us hang in there forever. And mm-hmm. if you did, if you were a narcissist and you didn't care, you would have mm-hmm. left a long time ago. So that's what makes it doubly evil. Is like they capture the, some really sweet fucking souls, man. And then they made you didn't do anything wrong and look no. at what they did to you just because you fucking cared. Yeah, I did care. And Ron didn't give a fuck about how many lives he hurt or anything. It, it's nope. just, I, 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 I don't even understand like this world sometimes because I, I know, I just don't get it, my man. I know, I know. If you think of anything that we might have missed as we round out here, as I throw you some questions, please, please um, think about that and let me know. Otherwise, we got sure. seven or eight questions. And then, guys, if yeah, you have go. any ones yep. at all, um, yep. Chris is here for you. Okay. So, yeah, not boring at all. How? It's not boring. It's fucking tragic. And and it, I'm glad you're here to, to survive and tell about it, my man. Mm. Yeah, Chow. I mean, boring? Are you mad? This has been astonishing, heartbreaking, but excellent. This is information and content that the world needs. Thanks, Chow. And thanks, Thank you, Chris, Jay. for speaking out about it, ma'am. Thank you. Chris, when this is done, it sometimes yeah. takes a few hours or sometimes right away. But you'll have the option, and this is at the audience, too, that might not know, to watch mm-hmm. all the comments and see the feedback live so you can just see exactly oh, what okay. uh, people were saying. Yeah, yeah. I'd love, I'd love to, yeah. Sometimes it takes a few hours, and like I said, if you don't, there's a, I'll show you off off screen, but there's a box where you can hit live chat, and you okay. might not see it right away, or it takes hours to publish. But you'll be, you'll be astonished by the um, support and the and the chat. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Troy Snuffles, how you doing? Question: Read the Australian victims of trafficking. U.S. judge directed them to do something. Okay, I we think we did that one, Doug. We did. Yeah, we've I'm, covered that one. Yeah. I'm an OT. Uh, I, I would have figured that out without you interjecting. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm fucking with you. Oh, I want to... 
I wanted to ask you one question on the OT and then lady, you're, you're coming right up, but this is what I skipped. Dude, Tony, do you remember, or Tony snuffles, Chris, do you remember? After, yep. I, I remember being promised and I can't point you to the reference, but uh-huh. he, we were promised my man, no more body thetans after OT three. He freaking mm. says it right there. Like I thought I handled them. What was your reaction when you got to OT4 and the body thetans were on drugs and it was more body thetans? Did you have the idea that there would be no more body thetans and holy shit, why am I doing this again? I was like, again? <laughs> right? So what? But they're on drugs, Chris. Don't you understand? They were so unconscious, you couldn't access them on OT3. That makes That's sense right. to you, doesn't it? There, there would you like still... to write a success story? Yeah, I would. I'd like to... Um... Write a success story, and I'd also like to make a speech at graduation, if that's okay sure. with you. Mm-hmm. I would like to indicate that your needle's floating, sure and you've achieved you've achieved exiting Scientology, and the beautiful, the most beautiful thing is you'll never have to write a success story again. You'll never have to uh, make up false memories. And just, I live 10 minutes from the org, from Celebrity Center, Chris. The fact that I just don't have to go down there to, to be an ethical person or whatever, it just feels amazing every fucking day, man. Do you not miss like writing? Thank you, Bella Roach and Chairman of the Board. And well, guess that, what? Yeah, get, you know what? That. If you don't write in your success story, thank you, Chairman of the Board. It's considered an aim point. Exactly. And Chairman of the Board, if this does get forwarded to you, because this is definitely a critic that's going to uh, pass this little ivory tower, dude. Do you want to? Um, let's, yeah. Dave, I don't think there's any chance for you getting out. I mean, your fate lies uh, undoubtedly behind bars or dying before then. So Tom Cruise can take over. But if you ever want to come out and you can never get through the PTSD, I doubt it. It's a hell of a lot well, better world on the other side. Do you know what, Doug? If I could talk mm-hmm. to Dave in the schedule right what now. What would you, know you say, I'd... man? Yeah, I would say, Dave, fucking fuck you. <laughs> That's exactly. You took the words right out how of my f- mouth. Yeah. How fucking dare you destroy my family, yeah. destroy my career as an auditor in the name of money? I don't know what your religious or whatever beliefs are, but if you believe in karma, uh, let's just say I would not want to be Hubbard, Miscavige, and. Um, I just can't imagine what their fate would would actually be. Yeah. Lady says, do you still use some of the training? I do. TR2, for instance. What is that? Is that an acknowledgement, lady? It's an act, yeah. I am not worried that it came from LRH. I understand. I'm. Uh, most people are ashamed of using any of it. That's a great question. That's a great question. And to be honest with you, uh, Lady, I can't pronounce the second name. Lady Veritas. Veritas, yeah. Um. So... What I did notice about TRs when you leave Scientology is do not, under any circumstances, use that crazy TR zero with strange people. What do you, you mean? What do you mean, Chris? Like, what are you talking like, about? Okay, so say you've got a girl at the checkout, right? Or a guy at the checkout, and you're getting your shopping. You don't have to confront them and stare them right in the eye because it makes them feel really uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah? So, like... You know, like when you're talking to somebody, you don't have to maintain eye contact, almost blinkless, like sitting there staring right into the very core of their fucking soul. Like, you don't have to do that. It puts people off. But the point she's making about TR2, I like that because Mm -hmm. it's kind of true. Like, who doesn't want an appropriate acknowledgement? Exactly. Yeah, you say, you know, I don't feel good today. I feel like I feel a bit down and... You know, um, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with me. And the person across from you, what they're going to say? Woohoo! No, you're going to give an appropriate. You're going to say, "Oh, I'm sorry, you feel that way, man. Um, are you okay? What's going on? You see what I mean? Like, I do. Of, I got that. Kind of, yeah, it's a natural human sort of exactly. Uh, so it doesn't even originate with LRH. Exactly, lady. No, you know, who gives a fuck who it came from? Every but well, there's nothing wrong with the, waiting for someone to finish and then giving an acknowledgement. You they want exactly. to be heard, but that's human nature. That's not it hard. is. But it's the 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 strange TR zero staring. Yes, that that's a great I, point that I don't use anymore. I wanted because to ask you how long that took to get over because that was something I actively oh, had to train uh, myself for years, bro, to stop doing that. Mate, yeah, I, I had to TR0. work on it. I, I, I used to do, have to do TR zero every day as an orator for like 15 minutes. Wow, so how the fuck did you stop staring at people when you got out? Like what 17 was... years. Um, I, I just sort of like just quit it really. I was like. Really? You didn't find yeah. yourself doing that and having to stop? Yeah. I, I, purposely I did, no, look no, away? No, 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 no. I did find myself doing it quite quite mm-hmm. a bit. And um, I, uh, people would feel uncomfortable and sort of like shudder a little bit like I'm some kind of fucking creep or something. Like, It does look kind of. It does look. 
pedophile is creepy ish like that. It really does. And it's intimidating to people. And yeah, that's why like, L. Ron Hubbard would use it's like, that. It's like, no, I don't want a receipt. Thank you. Oh, shit. And then walk off, you know, like with your eyes still like, like, Jesus, who the good. fuck? Yeah, I know. It's like, who the fuck I'm is backing up? <laughs> like, <laughs> What's he doing? You know, like I learned that pretty quick actually. That just don't make too much eye contact because it's it's creepy. Yeah, it's really creepy. That's good that you could kick that so fast. I it yeah, took a couple yeah. years, and I would even tell my friends while I was going through this process that I might act a little weird because I'm trying to coach myself out of Scientology. So mm. I'd say if I look away, because I felt guilty not looking at him. My TRs were so used to being in that I feel like I'm not listening to him if I don't look right at him. Right, right. But right. and I had that thousand yard stare, so I would purposely. I would do weird shit, man. I would like train myself when I'm talking to my mates to look away at weird time. I didn't even know how to look away properly. I had to learn how to communicate, Chris, from yeah. the start. So that's amazing that yeah. you were able to get through that so yeah, freaking yeah. quickly. Yeah. Here we go. Moonage Daydream. Cool moniker slash name. Um, how does Scientology make money for the solo auditing OT levels? Do you have to pay them so you can do solo auditing or something? Do you understand that? Yeah. 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 And yes, you do. And a lot of money like loads i have the price list on a bridge called the on a episode um on the series called the bridge to total amnesia part two if you want to see the price list but it's only increased from there to get some idea of uh what that actually costs it's a lot of money it's, it's a shitload. shitload you can't be poor and get up the ot levels but you can yep. be middle class and put everything on credit cards beg bar and steal from uncles and everybody yeah um it's a self-infesting thing where it's like crack you get addicted to going up the bridge like a crack addict <laughs> and you will do anything you can borrow yeah, credit cards to get up there right isn't that not a, yep. a, a good analogy because that's exactly what it is that's 100%. what it was for me doug the beatles said it best all you need is love amen Self love and know you're a worthy person who deserves to love and be loved. Simple and complicated at the same time. Yeah, that's the great lesson, right? But then putting that to practice is a lifetime endeavor, is it not? It is. Listen, uh, in answer to your question, Hubbard's <laughs> got it covered. He's working on OT nine and ten. Just give him some fucking time for fuck's sake. Relax. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll give you some time, man. Remember, he's on target too, Chris. So he can it, telepathically be no, no, no. He's covered. not on target two. He's not on target two. This Where is, is he? Please do tell well. Well, uh, it's not that they they think he's coming back to to That's write it right. And, and, and wasn't the, he supposed what, to return twenty one years later? But that time yeah, has come and gone, and so that time they, has gone by over a decade, at least. You know what you were talking about earlier, Chris, about moving the goalposts and how yeah. um, if this didn't happen, then they always change it. It reminds me of not only every cult, but there was one in particular where they did a study where I forget. Oh, you guys, let me know in the comments after this because I it's a famous cult, but it was a study where. The UFO landing or something or the apocalypse was supposed to happen on a certain day. It didn't. Yeah. So the leader, then that not only didn't cause the people not to leave, but there was an explanation as to why they even believe more needed to and did believe more powerfully. And mm. cults often change the goalposts when the revelation that keeps the adherence in there for so long, they just simply change it. Exactly what yeah. Scientology does. Yeah. Thank you, Hubbard. We'll be waiting for nine and ten. Merc Merc Mercamoon? Yeah. Um, question, Chris. Sorry if I missed this. Bet on one point five catching up live. But how long yeah. ago was it that you left and all this shit kicked off? It's uh, a good question. Four years ago. Four years ago. Okay, man, you're yeah. making such fantastic process progress with everything you've been through. You're already oh, seeing you, a man. psychologist. You seem like you're in great shape. I, when I was in year four, where you're at, I was a fucking mess living out of my car, dude. Oh. Okay, so I guess let me. So that's it on on the questions and stuff. Are you sure we didn't miss anything? I don't want you to regret. And, damn it! I wish I would have said that. While I scroll through questions, uh, Chris, just uh, to see if there's anything more. Just keep that in mind before we yeah. get ready to roll out of here um, shortly. Let me check my phone. My notes of things I want to say. Sure, sure. And I'll read some stuff off while you're uh, doing that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So this is from Tin Tin Seven O One Three. Chris, your stories are so terrible and fucked up. Was not boring. I am so, so ass. Sorry, you are a fighter. You all are fighters. Even that gave. Thank you very much. That's very kind Thank of you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, so they're talking to each other. Again, guys, final comments. Chris, Chris this was almost exactly three hours. Is there anything you'd like to say or uh, before we end off the session? Is there, there anything, anything you'd like to say or ask? Stay or ask session. before I end off the session. Um, Here we go. Um, 
One quick one, Chris. Uh, your needle's yeah, not floating ahead. anyway. I'm getting a bit of a dirty needle, so perhaps this will handle it. All Chris, right. as you have come out quite recently, how did you deal with, respond to all the information in the media and on the web about Scientology? Fantastic question. And I love you. Loaded question. Great question, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect okay, to end so, off. In fact, you would be amazed at Class 5 org level how many staff members already have access to that information in the media. Because what are you talking about, really? Yeah, yeah. Like they just don't read it. They don't. They dismiss it. They, they they do read it. They read it. I used to pull with holes on people reading it all the time. Right, but you were so certain of what you believed in, you knew it was n theta, right? Yeah, but at class five org level is not sealed level, so all communications are not shut off. Wow, that's so interesting. So even though you had access to the very data that would show you who this man was and snapped you out of the spell, and as an auditor you had to handle that, you still simply couldn't accept the data because you it was all SP data, right? Yeah what i mean that's i can't think of a better place to end it let's just leave it on that mind okay. fuck and, and and to leave it on a floating needle i just want to say chris yes i mate. promise you people are listening that you won't even hear from let alone the people that you do you've helped out dramatically this is the first time you've spoken out it takes a lot it of is. balls and i know this is a long time in coming and you're just a beautiful fucking man dude and i appreciate you sharing thank this you, shit thank oh, you i appreciate that thank you so um yeah, if anybody wants to uh, follow me, oh on yes, yeah, please tell me where what you'd like to say, Chris. Links are going to be in the so, description box to contact him after this video. Yeah, you what can he talk says to me. Right I'll, I'll talk to anybody. So like, um, as long as you're not a crazy nutter, I'll talk to you. Yes, him. or a Scientologist uh, <laughs> trying to get him back into the cult. Stay away from them. He's, yeah, he's had yeah, enough. Yeah. So my Facebook is rammed. It's a five k because I keep that as my professional musician sort of page. Um, but my Instagram, I'm trying to build a little bit mm -hmm. because I don't really use it that much. So you can follow me at Chris Lawrence Malin. Yes. Any other contacts that you want to say? What about promoting your music and where are you at music wise and stuff? I don't, I don't need to promote it. Okay. Fair enough. It's all good. I okay. have enough promotion. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Your music is astonishing, my friends. And to, um, I guess to end off, we'll have a few words from the absolute psychopathic dipshit that started all this thank you very much guys for an incredible talk uh and we'll see you mm. soon now there is no one and you find in each and every case you're finding the phenomenon of entities communications space ships other planets locations beingness in other states and all of this and you find this to be a consistent condition you have fulfilled this definition of the mass universe